Yo, welcome to the docket prevented, uh, presented by Defense Diaries. I am your host, Bob Mata, and I'm joined by my much better, much more beautiful co-host from Miami, no less. Fort Lauderdale. Miami, Flo- eh, whatever. Like, can't, why can't we make it glamorous, you know? Like, Fort Lauderdale's like spring break debauchery. Miami's like, mm, mm, mm. Uh, so yeah, Allie was kind enough. She's got a, a federal federal court tomorrow uh, for a client. So she flew out today and it was kind enough to jump on with us to play um, various parts in our reenactment of the uh, March 18th hearing. And just, just to be clear, um, as you know, and I know Michael Osbrook does not agree with me. I didn't care <laughs> about the, uh, the motion for sanctions uh, and the motion for contempt he's concerned about it from the aspect of, all right, I I need to see how they didn't prove anything (laughs) and how they, you know, just completely shit the bed. And he's talking about McClellan in that sense. He's right. Um, But of much greater interest to you and I, and I think to, to people that are following the case pretty heavily, especially in light of the fact that we heard little to nothing about what I found to be earth shattering testimony from a cop who was one of three cops that was continuing to investigate alternate suspects and who firmly believes to this day, as he testified in court in front of all the other cops that were responsible for arresting Richard Allen, you know, these guys were burning holes in click as he's sitting on the stand, you know, with their eyeballs, with their laser eyes, you know, it's like, it was a moment. And and just I want to make it clear to people, because I heard misstatements from some other creators. Todd Click was not subpoenaed. Okay, he was not subpoenaed. He he came. Well, he probably would have. He been was not because, subpoenaed. But he, okay. He he wasn't like even he, if he, someone's a a uh, cooperating witness, typically you still. They didn't subpoena him. No, you'll see at the end of the the hearing. Um, I think, I I don't know if Brad or I I don't know who asked if the witness could be released and uh, Gull says, Oh, he's not under my, he's not subject to this court's, you know, so he came, which which is a significant because of the, the entire narrative that was out there for a while that click was backtracking, that click wasn't on board with the memo click didn't agree. So this, this puts that to bed immediately all right this this guy feels so adamant about it and and this is going to be a taste of what we can expect at trial you know unless gull finds a way to shut down the saudi defense you know like which she could you know i I don't see how you know she could by law but i mean she could i mean she she can do whatever she wants to do so so kind of the sorry Go ahead. I was just going to say before we hop in anything, we should. Speaking of hop, thank everybody for coming on their Easter and wish 100%. them happy Easter. All that. Kind yeah, of for those of uh, for those of our beautiful subs and viewers out there that celebrate Easter, um, happy Easter first and foremost, and thank you for joining us. As we got uh, the Easter bunny left this in my basket this morning, uh, okay. and just so you, there's an understanding. Um, some concerned citizens, namely, uh, Carol Winicky, uh, Sleuthy Goosey, uh, the unraveling and yellow jacket and myself, uh, all pulled in some cash and said, Hey, you know what we need? We need to get the transcript of this because mainstream media seems to be ignoring it. Those who were there in the audience on the, if you want to call it the other side of this, uh, are misquoting it and misstating what it was or not talking about it at all. And I'm not letting that happen. This is going to get on our out watch. there. Not on our watch. And I will, uh, I'll have the document up. I've, of course, watermarked it. So uh, anybody, and I'm just going to flat out say it, any creators out there, uh, I know uh, G and the Grizzlies may want to use some of this. It, it's free game. Anybody that wants to to be able to go through the documents on their own channels, we're happy to, I'm um, granting you, uh access to that right now verbally during this live feel free to use it um i think it's important i I want it out there i want people to hear it i want everyone to hear it because i think it's uh i think it's key 
for the for the case. And you know, and and the other reason that it was important for me, Alan, I, I don't know if you knew, like when I had rushed into after court that day and I was kind of shooting from the hip and I misstated, said that it was a girl. And I was mortified to find out the next day that I had misquoted instead of reading from my notes. And because I, if you know anything about me, if you know, if you take one thing away from me, the only thing I care about is the facts. I leave the speculating to everybody else. That's what they can do. Like good for them. Good on them. I, all I give a shit about is being accurate and being factual. And if I fuck up, you can be guaranteed. I will be owning it immediately. The second I find out, on any platform, I will always do that. So the best way with respect to this to avoid all that is to get the transcript. Now, this wasn't magic. Kara reached out. She said, okay. She called the court reporter, said, how much is it going to cost for the transcript? She came back to us, says, this is how much it's going to cost. I Venmoed her the cash, my portion of it. She prepared the transcript and it got emailed to us. So, you know, it, it was funny. We knew that it was out there and everyone was like, how are we going to get the transcript? I'm like, you order it just like you do for any case. But um, so we got it this morning. I'm excited to go through it. As I said, initially, I will be playing the roles of uh, both Andrew Baldwin, Brad Rosie, and Todd Click. Uh, Allison will be playing the roles of Stacey Diener, who is the state's attorney that handled this. As you, you may or may not know, McClellan did not touch this with the 10 foot pole. He was busy getting ready for his contempt motion instead of the motion to dismiss that it had something to do with the case. Uh, so he, he wanted to have Diener handle this, which she did. Um, and then when we get to the portion, when Diener puts Mullins on during her case where he's explaining how the Brad Holder uh, video interview disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, I will, I will handle Mullins. Okay. And then when we get to, you can either be Mullins or you can be Andrew Baldwin at that time for cross-examination of Diener's witness. So I'm going to let you decide if you want to be like, you know, what you normally do defense attorney extraordinaire or if you want to play cop for a minute, you know, sometimes it's, it's fun to play cop. Um, I like doing it on the podcast. Um, I enjoy that. So uh, better our, being snarky like a cop than. Yeah. You know, I like, I like reading to, with, you know, bit. meaning you've had a lot of practice. I do. You know, I do that. I do that. I was reading. Uh, no, I'm not going to even get into it. All right. So let's jump right in. Um, thank you again, everyone for being here. Uh, I'm sorry if we have invaded your easter evening i was trying to wait until everybody's like maybe you know family meals would be done and uh, i wanted to let my wife get settled in miami and get into her hotel and so i think we're i think we're good to go all right so do you have your document up i do all right i'm gonna start at uh i don't know if i should start the caption or let me before see. we get started i think we should start personally but you know what start at the caption no, at like just whichever. proceedings. You decide, actually. Okay, so uh, I'm going to throw it up here, so you. Yeah, it makes sense it. to to state for the for the record, for the case and the proceeding. Yeah, for sure. All right, so let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, and and part of one of the things I have to be doing uh, from now on at the beginning of my lives. So for anybody that is joining us that is not aware of what we are discussing, we are discussing. Uh, the case of Richard Allen, who has been arrested uh, and is charged with uh, the murders of two beautiful young girls back on or around February 13th of 2017, Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Uh, they had gone out to the trail uh, in, in or around Delphi, Indiana, were dropped off by uh, Kelsey German, which is Libby's sister. Uh, they were supposed to get picked up about three o'clock by uh, Libby's dad. He gets out to the trail, starts calling, gets no answers, gets out of the car, goes and searches for the girls. No luck. Uh, the family then makes a bunch of calls, runs around, progressively getting more frantic as time moves on. And in about 5, 530, they then finally call it in. Uh, sadly, the girls are discovered the following morning uh, and in a, on a property adjoining. Uh, 
the high bridge and uh, Freedom Bridge and just kind of the nature area that they were in uh, on a gentleman named Ron Logan, his property that the girls were discovered five years goes by case goes cold. And then in October of uh, 2022, Richard Allen is arrested and that and everything else. Check out our content. We've been following it since the arrest pretty thoroughly. We handle all of the legal filings. We leave all the speculation, like I said, for the other channels. Um, we try to stick to just the facts. And I would just readings. mention that Richard Allen is someone with, and correct me if I'm wrong, because, but with no criminal history whatsoever, um, and this would be his very first encounter. Is yeah, he's got he's got zero criminal history. Um, Apparently, he was at his mother's house earlier that day. And the state's theory is he just got a hanker into murder and just decided to go out to the trails and um, willy nilly, uh, brutally end the lives of two beautiful young girls. So that that's the state's theory, as we don't really know of a motive. Um, all right, I'm going to make this big enough. I thought I put the change the watermark to the middle. Yeah, it's like because I like I don't want people trying to block acting like they procured shit. Because uh, I, I, I will call people out if they're trying to act like they got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so be warned. Uh, just kidding. All right. So let's go. State of Indiana versus uh, Richard Allen, defendant. Uh, this is the record of the proceedings at the hearing on the motion to dismiss held March 18th, 2024. I was in attendance. I was taking notes. Um, but this is so much better. So much better to have the transcript. Uh, for the state of Indiana, we had Nick McClelland. Uh, James Luttrell and uh, Stacy Diener. Uh, she was she was new to the game that day. Uh, for the defendant, we had Brad Rosie and we had Andrew Baldwin representing. And Rick Allen was present at the hearing. All right. Okay. So you ready? Yeah. You get it started. Before we get started, and Ms. Diener, I understand you'll be handling the state's argument on the motion to dismiss. Yeah, you're playing both roles. Sorry. Here. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Okay. Before we get started, and Ms. Diener, I understand you'll be easy handling the state's argument on the motion to dismiss. Yes, I will, Your Honor. Okay. I just want to advise the counsel that when I granted the defense request for a speedy trial and set the trial as scheduled, I caused the jury office to begin the process to get the jury questionnaires out to everybody. And on March 14th, the questionnaire packets went out in the mail. That was the questionnaire that you all looked at before and submitted with the letter from the court dated March 11th, 2024, to accompany the questionnaire. And I established the same timeline that we had before. So as soon as the questionnaire comes back, I will provide those to counsel on a flash drive. And then I know before we part company here after the motion to dismiss, there are several motions that have been filed by both sides and we'll need to address before we go off the record. So may I? Yes. Judge, with regard to the questionnaires, did the court include the proposals from both sides or? Yes, they did, Mr. Rossi. Either side? I just didn't understand exactly. Yes. You did. Whatever questionnaire you all approved and submitted back to the court is the questionnaire Okay. that went out. All right. Very good. Thank you. I think the only thing that I didn't have from counsel was a list of witnesses. But if you could please provide that on the first day of jury voir dire, we can play the downstairs for them. We can play that downstairs for them. All right, Mr. Baldwin, you may proceed on your motion to dismiss for destroying exculpatory evidence. Thank you. We'd call Todd Click. You may proceed. Thank you, Judge. All right, now we're going to have the direct examination of Todd Click. I had told Allie I want to do both sides because Diener objects quite a bit. Um, so I will do, uh, I'll, and instead of me saying, Baldwin, Diener, I'll do question, answer. Question is always going to be by Andrew Baldwin. Answer will always be Todd Click. Mm -hmm. And then when Allie has objections, it'll work, babe. Don't worry. All Don't right. fret. Don't fret, my love. I still think you just slightly change your voice so it's not so question, it, answer. That's so much work for me to change my voice. Plus, Click and, and Baldwin sound kind of the same. Like they, right. neither of them have distinct voices. All right. Uh, questions by Mr. Baldwin. Question. State your name for the record. Answer. My name is Todd Click. Spell your name if you would. 
answer click first name todd t-o-d-d uh what do you do for a living answer i'm currently a parole agent with the state of indiana question what did you do prior to that answer i was a police officer with the rushville police department and how long did you do that answer a little more than 20 years from february 6th of 2001 and then i retired december 31st of 2022 question to get to the heart of this have you worked on the delphi case answer yes i have question can you tell the judge what kind of work you did on the case answer i provided investigative assistance to two other detectives detective greg ferency who was a Terre Haute police officer with the, and he was also with the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force member, and Detective Kevin Murphy, who was Indiana State Police Detective, who was also an FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force member. I want to pause it for just a second. For all those people that have been poo pooing the Odinist theory and the alternative suspect theory, these are three legitimate cops i just need that understood these are three legitimate cops these aren't barney fife single bullet in the pocket inept guys these are three very well qualified season law enforcement officers that continued down this path all right and and now you got some background on who we're dealing with who these guys are that continued this investigation, not for days or weeks or months, but years tracking this angle. All right. Question. Did you have something? What do you got? I was just going to say, did everyone think we needed both question and answer? Maybe just an answer? I don't know. Or is everyone, is it kind of flowing fine question, answer? I will, I'll look, uh, let us know. If you guys, if you guys can keep because partially why I'm doing that is for the podcast. I think it's easier right. when the folks on, on YouTube are watching. I think so maybe you could just do answer and then, but I guess. Okay. Not. Yeah. No, I think that's, I was kind of doing that. I was skipping the question. So if yeah, maybe I'll do that. Well, like I'll, that, I'll skip thought. question and I'll just do answer. So that'll at least give a cue because our podcast is remember. Yeah. And people are saying that, that they're fine with both question, you saying question and answer. So I guess just do it based on how it's flowing. In yeah. Right. Cause like, as I was going, it was, I was sometimes skipping the question and just do an answer. So I, I think I'll probably do it that way. Okay. Uh, question, except for that first one, getting re back started. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of things were you doing in terms of investigative support answer, conducting interviews and trying to gather evidence over the course of how long did you do that? Answer, roughly three years. I began providing assistance approximately June of 2018 and ceased when Detective Ferency was shot and killed in the line of duty July 7th of 2021. All right. Uh, can you give just a very general understanding, a, a little bit more detail than you did, but still general of what kind of things you did? Answer, well, in June of 2018, Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy came to Rushville to conduct an interview with a gentleman by the name of Elvis Fields. They asked us to use our interview room at the Rushville Police Department. They asked me if I'd be willing to operate the equipment for them. Gee, I wonder if they, they were able to keep a copy of that video. I wonder if that was destroyed. Um, they then asked me if I was familiar with Elvis Fields, to which I was. They asked if I'd be, uh, they'd asked if I would kind of watch the interview and kind of give uh, my opinion on what kind of a hometown opinion. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Keep going. Answer. Okay. So after that, Detective Murphy and Detective Ferency told me that they were looking for a couple of individuals from the Delphi area. Question. Who were they? Answer. They were Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall. Okay. Keep going. They asked me if I could help maybe try and find a tie between Elvis Fields and Mr. Holden and Mr. Westfall. Okay. So that was one of your kind of things that you did in the course of this investigation. Answer. That is correct. Were you able to find any ties between Elvis Fields and Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall? Answer. Yes, I was. What ties did you find? Answer. While reviewing some photographs on Brad Holder's Facebook page, I located a photograph of the, the approximately five individuals. They were all wearing Vinlander t-shirts. 
question for those who don't know what is a Vinlander? Answer Vinlander is a group that practices Norse and paganism religion, kind of along the Viking culture. Okay, keep going. So in the photos, I identified Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall, and there was a gentleman standing in between the two of them that I immediately recognized to be Johnny Messer. Okay, how do you know Johnny Messer? Well, Johnny Messer is from Rushville. He'd been arrested numerous times uh, from the Rushville Police Department, so I was very familiar with Johnny. Question, okay, well, what else, if anything, did you do following the recognition that Johnny Messer, uh, Johnny Messer from Rushville was hanging out with these two guys from Delphi named Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall answer. Okay. So I knew from the previous incidents that Johnny Messer's uncle, Billy Messer used to live with Elvis fields, which when he said that blew my mind because that was immediately like a, a, a much more thorough connection than what had originally been put out that I knew of, at least I didn't remember reading that particular information in the memo and I'm going off script. If you guys can't tell right now this, because what I was seeing in the, the connection with Elvis fields and Messer and Messer to Holder and West uh, Westfall was that, you know, that they had seen that there was some mimicking of Brad Holder's Facebook page on Elvis fields. I'm like, man, that's tenuous. This is not tenuous. That is a direct, direct link. So I, I was, I was, I was a little shocked and surprised about that, but maybe I missed that in the memo. I don't know though. Question. Okay. So that's another connection. Uh, a answer. That is correct. Q keep going answer. So I contacted detective Ferency and detective Murphy and told them specifically to look at that photo. And that the individual standing in between Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall was Johnny Messer, who was an individual from Rushville. Question, okay, was there any other, what did you do after that? Answer, okay, so after that, I, I know that De, uh, Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy came down to Rushville and we had conducted an interview with Johnny Messer. Question, okay, and then what happened? Answer, after conducting that interview, we conducted an interview with Taylor, uh, Taylor Horn today, who was an ex-girlfriend of Johnny Messer's. Question, and did she provide any information that was useful in the investigation? Answer, yes, she did. Question, okay, keep going. What's next? So this is how you do a direct, just for people that don't understand how direct and the difference between a direct and a cross-examination you're just kind of guiding your witness on direct. You're leaving questions open-ended so that they can kind of fill it in with a narrative style of uh, answer in terms well, of Well, especially, sorry, but I was just going to say, especially when you have like a trained officer who can handle their own. I mean, other right. times you want to, you may want to keep it closed so the person doesn't go off script or have, you know, but for this witness specifically, very good strategy to leave it very open with and what next yeah i mean because i looked at this as click finally getting to have his piece getting to say his piece out out for the world to know you know which is why it was incredibly upsetting to me uh and par for the course that the mainstream media was not covering this aspect of it at all pretending like it, like covering the part that mattered not in in terms of the trial moving forward you know in terms of appellate issues you know that's fine that, that that may rear its ugly head down the road but in terms of the trial this is the thing that mattered all right and, and babe when you sustain my first objection just pause because i, I want to say something about the objection okay uh so answer she was able to provide photographs and we're talking about again taylor uh, she was able to provide photographs of johnny messer patrick westfall brad holder and several other individuals that the photographs were taken during club meetings or outings that the Vin, uh, Vinlander group conducted. Okay, and what did you do then? We conducted several other interviews. I had specifically asked Johnny if he had tried to recruit anyone else from the Rushville area to be a part of this Vinlander group. He denied that he did. Judge, I'm going to object to him reporting on what Johnny Messer may have told him. Sustain You're it. Oh, you oh, want I'm me to play? Oh, I'm myself. Sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. You Sorry, got it. it. So I didn't have to ask you to pause. All right, do it. I'll do it one more time. 
Judge, I'm going to object to him reporting on what Johnny Messer may have told him. Sustained. Johnny Messer is not here to testify. So we're going to pause right there. Okay. Sorry, that's where I wanted to pause. And Go I just want to note that although that is hearsay and it's not allowed at trial, and I'd, I'd have to double check Indiana, but every state that I've ever practiced in or been in a pretrial hearing in, the rules of evidence do not apply. And police officers often and every day always testify to what witnesses told them, to what other people said. So I don't know why that objection went by without any retort and why it was, you know, sustained so quickly. But it the the objection of hearsay, which for those of you who don't know, is when someone is telling speaking about something someone else said to them um, would be hearsay. And that is typically and out, like of I said, out of court, out of court, out of court. Yes. Always allowed in, in pretrial hearings across this country every day. Yeah. And you'll see as the objections intensify, um, we'll have some discussion about, you know, cause remember, and you'll see as you're playing your role, Diener has a very specific objection to what's going on here. And you can tell that Andy had a, a, a very clear idea of what, what he wanted to happen in this hearing. So, you know, and, the, and when we get to it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to have that discussion with you because strategically it's an interesting move and it's an interesting argument that I think you and I will probably have a pretty good little back and forth on. All right. Um, so question after you, after your interview with Johnny Messer, what then did you do answer? I conducted several interviews of people that I knew were connected to Johnny Messer. And those individuals told me that Johnny had tried to recruit them into the Vinlander group question. Okay. So after you learn that Johnny Messer is recruiting people, then what do you do answer? We also had, during our interview with Taylor Hornaday, she had given us a couple cell phones of hers. Well, she had indicated there, were, uh, there was a cell phone of hers that contained recordings of a kidnapping that Johnny was involved in. So we obtained a search warrant to go into that cell phone and conduct a forensic exam, uh, forensic, forensic exam to retrieve those recordings. Okay, was it fruitful? There were recordings of Johnny Messer and another individual kidnapping an individual at gunpoint in the Indianapolis area. What did you then do? Answer, at that point, we tried to identify who the victim of the kidnapping was, but we were unsuccessful. Now, the way this played out is when I, I misquoted that statement, and I said it was a girl, and the following day, Kara had found, uh, through somebody else, had found an old warrant that was prepared by uh, Click. Okay. And it was for Johnny Messer. And in that it was re referencing a kidnapping that was caught on audio. All right. So to this day, I, I still don't know whether or not this is the same thing. I mean, it, to me, it seems like it has to be, but in oh. that, in that warrant, he names the individual. Like that was the whole thing that threw me off. Cause when I saw the warrant, I'm like, okay, well he testified that like the day that I'm in court, I hear him testify that he was never able to identify the victim. However, in that affidavit for that warrant, he does identify who the victim was. So I like, I don't know as I sit here now, whether or not that particular was, which was pertaining to a Johnny Messer kidnapping. And, I don't know if it's the same thing. And I was just going to say it, it meant it uses the word recordings and not right video so it would seem to indicate that it is the same but but why would he testify that he tried to identify who the victim of the kidnapping was but they were unsuccessful that's oh they I'm identified trying. someone in this correct other that's ah, that's what sorry. i just said yeah that's what i was just saying <laughs> so i don't know like that was the biggest factor for me you know i'm like oh well uh okay they're naming who the victim is in the warrant and it was a dude so I don't know. Um, so that's what came out word for word at the hearing. Okay. Question. Okay. Keep going. Uh, what was kind of the next big thing that you did on the case? 
Answer. All right. Well, we conducted some other interviews. We had spoken with Joyce Moffat, who is Elvis Field's sister. During that interview, she confirmed that she had heard Elvis make comments about things associated with the crime scene, the murder crime scene of Abby Williams and Liberty German. Question. Okay. Well, what did you do with that information or what did you do next? Answer. The information was given, of course, myself, Detective Murphy and Detective Ferency were aware of that information. And I was told by Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy that they were going to try and contact Unified Command and to try and obtain a search warrant for the residents of Elvis Fields. Question. Okay. What happened with that? Answer. We never heard anything. Question. Unified Command never called and said, yep, tell us what that information, uh, tell us, tell us what that information and we'll try to get that. Answer, yeah. I, Detective Murphy, and Detective Ferency were unable to give me an answer as to whether or not we were authorized to get a search warrant. Question, so Joyce Moffat, Elvis's sister, says basically he's somehow involved in the crime and you weren't able to secure a search warrant of any type. Answer, that is correct. Question, okay, well, what happened next? Answer, we conducted several other interviews throughout the time frame, that time frame. Question, okay, was there any other connection between Elvis Fields and Brad Holder that you know of? Answer, we were able to connect Elvis Fields to a gentleman by the name of Josh Chrisman. Josh Chrisman was originally part of a group called the American Guard. There was a make America Great Again rally that was held in Indianapolis in approximately 2016. I believe where the American Guard and the Vinlanders were together. And after that rally, they had a house party at a gentleman's house by the name of Mickey McGilley. Question, Mickey McGinley? Answer, McGinley, yes, thank you. Uh, he was also, Mr. McGinley was also a Vinlander. He was also friends with a gentleman by the name of Brian James, who was the, I guess, head of the American Guard. Question, okay. Answer, so we were able to connect Josh Chrisman, Chrisman uh, we knew that he was a semi truck driver that conducted deliveries for a company called Flynn Livestock that would transport hogs to different facilities. Now, I know that uh, Weishman's Pig Farm in Delphi and then the Tyson plant in Logansport that they would make deliveries to. Elvis Fields kind of worked under the table at Flynn Livestock, and he would get paid by the drivers to load and unload the semis, and he would periodically ride with the drivers to make deliveries. So there you go. Question. So Johnny Messer knew, what's this guy's name? Uh, the new guy that you were just talking about? Josh Chrisman. Ah, question. Josh Chrisman. Uh, and Josh Chrisman, Chrisman knew Elvis Fields. Yes, that is correct. Question. Okay. So that's another connection. Were there any other connections to Brad Holder between Elvis Fields and Brad Holder? Between Josh Chrisman and Johnny Messer, I don't recall any others. Okay. Do you recall if there were any Facebook photos that you had looked at where Brad Holder was following Elvis Fields or vice versa? Answer, there were some pictures on Elvis Fields' Facebook page and Brad Holder's Facebook page that were very similar in nature. And what do you mean by that? Answer, there was pictures of sticks that were placed in different arrangements. I know that there was like a picture of a folding pocket knife that each had, and they each had similar pictures of trees. It was just, the similarities were very odd. Okay. So that could be another connection between Brad Holder and Elvis Fields. Answer, we believe so, yes. Question, did Elvis Fields ever admit to anybody else or say anything else that was suspicious or would show that he might have been involved in these murders? Judge, I'm going to eject. The motion is about a missing audio recording of a Brad Holder interview. And I am not sure what the connection with Elvis Fields or how this is helpful to us with regard to their motion. How is this relevant to your motion? Judge, Mr. McClellan, in his response to our motion, said that two things. Number one, that it's the, it's, it's the missing document, the missing video is not either exculpatory or materially, uh, materially useful to the defense. What I am doing right now is laying down the foundation that at the end of the road, you will see, yeah, this is actually, it actually would be material useful to the defense based upon his investigation. 
number one. Number two, you will be finding in a moment that, well, Mr. McClellan argued bad faith. You have to prove bad faith. Well, that's difficult to do. And part of what is happening here is you're going to learn that Mr. Click, that the law enforcement working on this case operated in bad faith in that they refused to investigate. They tried to, in conjunction with other evidence that I will be talking about. Okay. So we're going to get to this evidence then? Yes. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Then let's get to that evidence. Yes. Sh shall we? I mean, it may not be through this witness. It may be through others. Well, let's get to it then, sir. Okay. Question. Did Elvis Fields make any admissions that you know of about being involved in the crime? Objection. I would ask that those be admissions made to him. Sustained. Judge, hearsay, there's a hearsay exception against interest. And that's if somebody says that, quote, I was involved in a crime, that would be against their interest. To whom? It would be against their own interest. Quote, I killed somebody. That would be, that's not hearsay. That's an exception to hearsay. The objection was that it wasn't to this gentleman here. Oh. That's what I sustained. Question. Did Elvis, did you ever hear Elvis Field say anything where he was involved in this crime as a part of your investigation? Answer. Elvis did not say anything to me directly. No. Did he say anything to Kevin Murphy? Answer. There was back in 2018, I believe Jerry Holman and Kevin, Mur uh, Kevin Murphy interviewed Elvis Fields at the Rushville Police Department. And when Detective Murphy took Elvis back to his trailer, Elvis approached Detective Murphy and said, hey, if my spit is found on one of those girls and I've got a reason for why it's there, I'll be okay. Correct? Question. Okay. After that type of information, do you know if that was relayed or was that part of the information, if you know, was relayed to the unified command here? to try and see if they'd be willing to get a search warrant for Elvis Fields' house? Answer, yes, that was. If I recall, that was part of the, well, there, there were some statements that Elvis made to his sister that initially prompted the investigation into Elvis Fields. Question, okay, and that was Joyce Moffat or somebody else? Answer, that was a different sister. Question, okay, what, uh, what did that part of your investigation reveal? Answer, Elvis had made some statements to his sister, Mary Abrams. I don't recall exactly all of the words that he used, but he had told Mary that he was going to be, uh, that he was going to go away for a while and that he had done something bad to some girls, that he was on a high bridge and that he had placed some sticks in one of the girl's hair to represent antlers, and that he had, he was in a gang and that he had a brother now. He had a what now? To you objecting Ooh, quit typing sorry i was trying to pull up the rule <laughs> which rule so i wanted to be able to tell the well first of all hearsay at, at pre-trial hearings like i don't know why he's making exceptions to hearsay instead of saying that hearsay is allowed so but sorry um say your last line uh so do the I question just read, so the question was he had a what now it's, it's line nine for you. It's your objection. Oh, judge. I'm sorry. Okay. Judge, I'd like to renew the objection. It's not bringing us back to Brad Holder. We're kind of wandering far afield here. You said you'd get to the evidence. Let's get there. Okay. After Richard, well, just let's just, how much stuff was out there in your opinion that would cause a good investigator to think that Elvis Fields and Brad Holder were somehow connected to these murders? Answer. It was the belief of Detective Murphy, Detective Ferency, and I that there was a strong likelihood that there was that Brad Holder, Patrick Westfall, and Elvis Fields had a strong involvement in the murder of the girls. Question. Okay, so how did this investigation on your end wind down? Answer. The, my investigation came to an end when Detective Ferency was shot and killed in the line of duty. Question. And then what happened after that? What did you do then, if anything, on the Delphi case? Answer. I did absolutely. Judge, may I object again and be more specific in my objection? 
we're talking about a recording of Brad Holder on February 17th of 2017. All of this is years later, and they have to show how we would know that this evidence is exculpatory in 2017 when the recording goes missing in order to meet their threshold for materiality for the, I'm sorry, I should have mung my glasses, materially exculpatory. Uh, we're not there. And it doesn't seem to be going in that direction. It's irrelevant to what was known in 2017 when the recording went missing. Again, Judge, Mr. McClellan responded to my motion, citing case law that says, number one, you have to show that it was, as Ms. Uh, Ms. Diener just said, that it's either exculpatory or the other word was materially useful to the defense. And quote, this is all foundational for what now I'm about to get into, which is that what happened after he was done, what was done or what wasn't done, bad faith is very difficult to prove. And that's what we're, we're going to be venturing into that territory. But also it's going to show that what could have been or what ha uh, or would have been missing on those videos would have been certainly, certainly useful to the defense, materially useful and or exculpatory and that's for the court to decide i'd have to i'd have to sustain the objection okay did you have a chance so before we jump in so you see what he's doing here with the argument all right i mean on he's its trying faith, to show bad faith in one spot to carry over as general bad faith in the investigative team it's right I, I mean he he's basically saying that they didn't do shit about the things that you're hearing about where any competent investigator, I don't see how they could ignore it. And by way of the fact of them ignoring it speaks volumes as to why this, we believe that this, this video is now missing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like he's having to take a roundabout approach because how do you prove bad faith with the cop? Like Mullins is not going to get on the stand and said, yeah, we deleted your shit. We arrested somebody else. We don't need you. You know what I mean? That's never happening. So you it's, have to be able to establish, in my view, that there was a line of investigation that was legitimate. I mean, anybody hearing this out there that's saying it's ridiculous and they're just disregarding it is completely full of shit. My question to you is this, though. Is Brad Holder tied to that specific line of investigation? I, I well, that's why they're trying to show the connection between Fields Holder and Westfall. The, like oh. that's the entire thing. Like that was like I don't know if you were spacing out when I was reading the whole. Yeah, I, I forgot the names that we. That yeah, they, like gotcha. like he's trying to say these dudes were a crew. You know, Westfall and Holder we know are a crew, and they establish that Westfall Holder and Messer are a crew crew, and then we establish the relationship between Messer and Elvis Fields. I mean, Messer's fucking uncle was living with Elvis Fields or vice versa for a period of time. You know, Elvis Fields was was working at the, the pig farm where this guy was delivering shit. This Christmas guy who definitely has a connection to like it, it's intertwined. So they're able to establish it's not even tangential. I mean, there's direct connections between these individuals to where you, you can see a world in which Elvis Fields ends up on the bridge that day because short of that connection. You know, I like it's it's hard to to find Elvis Fields on his own accord ending up out at the bridge that day being involved. When you get these other guys involved, it then makes it much more plausible. You know, so but it it, it is a roundabout argument. You know, and, and you know going in that Diener is going to side with the state on this thing because he has to take the circuitous route to try to get to bad faith. He has to show that look. This was all the shit that the state had. This is all that the law enforcement had in front of them. They just kept ignoring it. We don't understand why. How can you ignore this? How could we had three good cops that were, were following these leads, that were developing these leads, and Unified Command just completely ignored it? They don't even get a warrant for Elvis Field's house. How does that happen? How does it happen where a guy admits that he's out there and then he left DNA on one of the girls and they don't secure a warrant to get into his house to see what they can find? That's not enough PC. Is that enough PC in your world, babe, to get in and get a warrant? I mean, every, everyone who's been paying attention to true crime in recent years knows that PC is the easiest thing to establish, a.k.a. I mean, the Allen uh, 
affidavit in support of his arrest. We're trying to figure out who the fuck killed the girls. Like, like, like that's what pisses me off about this thing. Like, I don't know. To me, it's just like, like everybody who's just pretending like that's why I wanted to order this transcript. That's why all of us that ordered this wanted to order this transcript because I want it to be heard coming out of clicks mouth. I don't want anyone getting on their podcast and saying, oh, well, click didn't really mean it. Yeah, he did. He did mean it. And he's still pissed off about it. And he's going to come to trial and he's still going to testify that he doesn't think that Rick Allen's the right guy. You know, this is a like, you like apples? How you like them apples type shit? Because that's <laughs> what this is going to be, a trial. All right. Um, but I digress. Okay. Uh, so you sustained, right? So question, did you have the chance? Well, next, what did you do then? What was the next time that you did anything on the Delphi case? Answer, I did nothing further after Detective Ferency was shot and killed. Question, after Richard Allen was arrested, what, if anything, did you do? Answer, I eventually contacted a friend of mine who was a former prosecutor and was now a criminal defense attorney. Why did you do that? Answer, after, Rich Al after Richard Allen was arrested, I was initially kind of shocked and confused. I was initially kind of shocked and confused. Uh, I read the affidavit, the probable cause affidavit for the arrest, and I felt like the investigative information that Ferency Murphy and I had compiled was more compelling than what was contained within the probable cause affidavit for Jalen's arrest. I felt so, as I sat in that courtroom that day, I felt so vindicated as I was just looking at the other people in the room you know, that are like sitting there, you know, oh, they got the right guy, burn him, burn him. You know, like, I'm like, come on, man. These guys, like, I, I would put their CVs, their, their resumes up against anybody in unified command. I mean, these guys are on the joint, ter <laughs> joint terrorism task force with the feds. I mean, these guys are legit cops. It's like, it's so bizarre to me. It's, it's so difficult for me to understand. And, and look, Cops do not play well with one another. Like that is not unusual. That is par for the course. It's it's more unusual for cops to play well with uh, together than it is for them not to. So, you know, cops can have different theories, but when you have the kind of information that these guys developed to, to know it and to hear it is shocking to the conscience when you hear out loud what it was and that it was not followed up on at all, especially in light of what they developed on Richard Allen. You know what I mean? Like that, that was always my thing. I like, I was, I was questioning the strength of this PCA the minute it dropped. And like, there's no dispute as to that. Like, you, you know, like, like I've said, it leans innocent the entire time. I thought it was a shit case. I've said all along, they're going to have to have more evidence that they're going to convict them. Cause that ain't it, you know? So it, it, it's, 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 it heartens me to know that, that cops also felt that not the unified command, obviously, cause they have a vested interest in Rick Allen at this point, but other cops, Question. So what did hey, you be can you give me your line? Because I'm stuck out of StreamYard and I can't figure out how to get back in. And that's usually how I make sure I'm on the same page. Yeah, I am uh page 16, line five is where I want to pick back up. Is that good? Yep, thank you. Okay. Uh question. So what did you be uh what did you do based upon that thought? Answer. Well, I wasn't sure exactly what to do, so I reached out to a friend of mine who was a former prosecutor and was a defense attorney for advice on what I should do. And what did you do after talking with him? Answer. We decided that we would draft a letter to McClellan's office. And that's what we did. Now this, this goes to the whole thing, the whole letter to McClellan that McClellan doesn't do anything about. And, you know, and this is rebutting when there were other creators coming out, trying to say that click was backing away from this. Like, like this is why, again, this is why this was ordered, this transcript, because the actuality needs to be heard by everyone. Now, I hope that this reaches enough people to where somebody in mainstream media is like, look, I'm on Vinny. 
like I, I am on Vinnie Politan's show a lot. And I have every intention on telling him, dude, like this shit needs to be reported to the people. Like, pe- like where is the mainstream media in this? I mean, that's what I was asking you from the jump. I was like, well, I, what? I, dude, I mean, I don't think they're worth a shit as it is, but damn. Like, you're going to just ignore this side of the case. It, it's where you've got cops now, not on a def- it, This isn't coming from the defense memo. For all the people, all oh, the lawyers are just full of shit. They're just blowing smoke. <laughs> okay, well, now you got the cop on the stand telling you what the fuck is up. So, you know, I mean, like, somebody needs to pay. Like, it, like, the more it doesn't happen, the more it causes people to wonder what is going on with this case. All right, so what did you do after talking to him? So we decided we'd draft a letter to McClellan's office, and that's what we did. Question, okay, well, I'm handing you what's been marked now as exhibit, uh, defense exhibit A. Judge, this letter refers to his report, and it is a letter from 2023, and he indicated that he began his participation in June of 2018, and the rules regarding the, Wait, the case Wait, where are you law- at? Babe, oh. I think you way skipped, dude. Like I was at. You, you said we'll move to admit Exhibit A, right? No, I, like oh. I'm just laying the foundation for it right now. I oh, am I'm on... sorry. Jesus. No, no problem. Uh, I'm I'm line twelve, page sixteen. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah, I just don't know why I thought you just said Exhibit A. So sorry. I did, but I'm we're he's got to lay the foundation for it, and then I'll okay. seek to enter it into evidence. Okay, I'm now handing you what's been marked now as Defendant's Exhibit A. If you could, uh, if I could get you to review that for me, and when you're done, let me know. Answer: Yes. This is part of the letter that was submitted to Mr. McClellan's office. Question: Okay, and that was sent by certified mail. Answer: Yes, it was. Question: What date? Answer: It would have been sent in the mail on April 28th, 2023. Who did you send it to? Answer: McClellan's office. Question: What was your reasoning for writing this letter? Answer, just to make sure that he was aware of the investigative work that Detective Murphy and Detective Ferency and I had conducted. Now, that's an interesting thing, you know, because when you have law enforcement in, in this is a small county, you know, I know you haven't made the drive out to Delphi with me. Uh, you know, Delphi is a very small town, um, you know, but when you have a, a small prosecutor's office, and, and like in any case, when law enforcement's going to decide which avenue they're going to take and that they're going to form the tunnel vision on, they're not necessarily chomping at the bit to give you other shit, meaning that they're not looking like, hey, do we give them all this 85 page report on the Odin shit or do we just give them the shit on Allen? Yeah, let's, let's we'll, we'll give them the Odin shit, but we're going to like piecemeal that over to them. You know, let's give them like, uh, let's Allen's our guy, right? Allen's our guy. Let's all put our hands in the middle. One, two, three, Allen. Right. So, so he's just making sure, like, did the cops not tell you exactly, about this? Exactly. I, like, I just want to make sure, did, did this come through like, to you? Uh, you didn't know about right. any of this? Right. Uh, so question, would you say you, uh, would you also say you're Mr. Baldwin? Well, I'd move to admit uh, defendant's exhibit A. Judge, um, this letter refers to his report, and it is a letter from 20. 20- 23 and he indicated that he began his participation in june of 2018 and the rules regarding the the case law regarding a motion to dismiss for destruction of exculpatory evidence or even in the alternative if it's potentially useful determining whether the state acted in bad faith has to do with what was known at the time of the particular item of evidence being missing lost or destroyed This is far beyond that time. And our argument is that it's not relevant for the purpose of this hearing. Any response? Uh, If you're hiding evidence back in 2017, it might be something that you would do in 2023. That's where this is headed. So there's been no testimony of, oh, yeah, of hidden evidence, judge. We're, We're about to get into that. You keep telling me we're about to get into that, sir, and... It takes time, Judge. I'm sorry. I will. I'll show defendants A admitted over objection. I think the objection goes to the weight I will give this particular exhibit rather than its admissibility. Thank you, Judge. Question. In this document, you say, quote, I want to write to ensure 
you've been provided all of the information associated with the investigative efforts for your use in this case and for disclosure to opposing counsel as provided by law, end quote. Is that right? Answer, yes, that is correct. Question, why did you do that? Answer, per the advice of my attorney. I mean, Click saw fit to go seek advice of counsel. That's how adamant this guy was. This, this cop is like, what in the fuck is going on with these people? <laughs> like, he, he goes and talks to an attorney and says, look, man, like, I, I, I think they're railroading a dude. Like, we did this shit, and it's way stronger than this evidence. Like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. How should I handle it? Like, that is what went down with Click. Just in case anybody's fuzzy about Click's feelings about the arrest of Richard Allen. I don't think you should be fuzzy anymore. In my mind, that was also like a little, um, like, look, I'm wondering if you were given this, but it also has to be given to the defense. So AKA let's not F around because this might end up with the defense by some other means. (laughs) Right. I mean, he's, he's already like, he knows how rare is it, babe, for uh, like a cop to be concerned about discovery, getting to the defense. Have you ever heard of, Hey, I just want to make sure this shit gets at least to the defense attorneys because maybe they'll pull their heads out of their ass. Like, like this kind of stuff, there's, there's no sugarcoating it. If you're on the other side of this, there's, there's no trying to, to spin your words in such a way that this doesn't say what it says about Todd click and about how he feels about what's going on. There's no way to mitigate this. If you were the unified command or people that, that are trying to spread, you know, spread their word, (laughs) their gospel, the gospel of the unified command. All right. So, hey, by the way, does anybody in uh, the Fort Lauderdale area think that the Chinese food is worth a shit out here? When we're done this. I'm going to have to order food from somewhere. I'll I mean, be looking in the comments. You may proceed, sir. <laughs> it's East Coast, so it's bound to be better than Sugar Grove, Illinois. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's Florida. So yeah. I'm like, um, yeah, you know, I don't yeah. know what their reputation is for Chinese food. Well, I mean, a lot of East Coasters retire down to Florida. So you would think that decent Chinese food would follow them down there. I mean, can you find a good Jewish deli in Florida or that you're aware of? Do you know? I'm certain you can. Right. I, so it's, I mean, but I don't know if you've got to be out by West Palm or, you know, yeah, or, I don't know. Fort Lauderdale is the same. All right. We or digress. Floridians <laughs> out there. I'm sure there's some Floridians in the chat. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, per advice of my attorney in for, uh, like, I want to read it again, per the advice of my attorney and in, any information that was presented to prosecutor's office should also be discoverable to any defense counsel question. Okay. Is that all you provided in the letter, the certified mailing that you sent to Nick McClelland answer? There was also a brief summary of our investigative product question. I'm going to hand you what's now been marked as defendants exhibit B and ask you to review that. Tell me when you're ready. And just a side note, uh, to a person starting with Kara and going down the line, we were all exceptionally disappointed that we were not provided with the exhibits as we should have been. We, we should have gotten all the exhibits. I should have had all of these exhibits sent along with the transcript. We received none of them, which didn't shock me by any stretch but it certainly irritated the shit out of me. Uh, Okay, so question. I'm going to hand you what's now been marked as Defendant's Exhibit B and ask you to review that. Tell me when you're ready. Question. Uh, Yes, this is the answer. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, Answer. Yes, this is the investigative summary that was included with the letter to Mr. McClellan's office. Question. Pretty much, or if not all, of what you had already previously testified is contained in Exhibit B. A. Answer. For the most part, yes. Mr. Baldwin. Okay, move to admit Exhibit B. State objects for the same reason. It's outside the scope of what's relevant to the evaluation of a missing record from February 17th, 2017. 
or from February 2017, discovered missing that same year. I'll show B admitted over objection. Again, it's the weight rather than admissibility. Question. So that was April the 29th that you sent this document detailing much of what your investigation involving Brad Holder, Patrick Westfall, and Elvis Fields. Is that correct? That is correct. Question. So did you hear from Nick, uh, Nick McClelland uh, on at any time during May of 2023? No, I did not. What about June of 2023? Did you hear from Nick McClelland at any time? Answer. No, I did not. What about July of 2023? Did you hear from Mr. McClelland then? Answer. No, I did not. Question. What about August? August. You had to hear from him in August, right? August of 2023. Did you hear from McClelland then? Answer. I was contacted by Mr. Mullins of Mr. McClelland's office, and it was mid-August, I believe, of 2023. Tell me about that. Answer. He wanted to set up a meeting with me and Detective Holman and asked that I provide all of my investigative materials, which would include police reports, audio video recordings of interviews. And then they told me that they would sit down with me and go over some of the evidence that they had against Mr. Allen to try and put my mind at ease. Put your mind at ease. That is correct. I want to talk about some, so like videotapes of who? Uh, who did you, well, strike that. Did you do that when you arrived? Answer, yes, I did. Okay. Did Mr. McClellan ask you in May, well, or anybody from law enforcement ask you to bring any of those items in May of 2023? Answer, no, sir. Did they, did anybody in law enforcement or in uh, Mr. McClellan's office ask you to bring any of those pieces of evidence, videos of Elvis Fields and others in June of 2023? Answer, no, sir. Question, July of 2023. Answer, no, sir. Okay, but it was in August of 2023. Yes. Question. All right. So then what did you do? Answer, I went to the Indiana State Police Post and met with the detectives, Mr. Holman and Mr. Vito, fanatic, I believe. Uh, what happened there? Answer, I provided them with everything that I had. I provided them with a thumb drive that contained all of the interviews that was conducted. I believe there was some cell phone ext uh, extraction data that was also included in that, like my audio and video interviews. And then I sat down with Detective Vito for approximately an hour or so and just gave a brief summary of the investigative work that Ferency, Murphy, and I had completed. Question, did they seem interested in your investigative efforts? Answer, in my opinion, no. Question, well, you said that you were there because you... How is it that you phrased it, that you were concerned? Answer, they, part of it was that they were going to show me evidence against Mr. Allen to help put my mind at ease. Question, did they do that? Answer, no, sir. Question, after this meeting with Vito and Holman and whoever else you said, what then happened? Answer, I left the state police post. As I was walking out, I noticed Brad Holder sitting in the front lobby <laughs> like this. So I like, you can't, when, when make I, this shit up. you can't make this shit up. And, and so people are like, no, so this is in August. Like in, in like I had people immediately, like, like sleuthy. I'm like, sleuthy. When, when did they redepose or re question Holder? Cause I can't remember if it was early September, or late August. So I was trying to say, okay, no matter what happened, whether it happens this day or whether it happens after like this is orchestrated so that when click is walking out of the interview room with these guys that he sees Brad Holder sitting there. We need so to they, make a little star. This is a, like a subjective opinion. Like, I don't know what you say before that. It, here comes an opinion. Go. Oh, yeah. Well, this is definitely an opinion, but I'm going to call it an educated opinion because th this, I think, was their way. When I say I think, that gives everybody a good, like, it's a good clue that I'm giving you my opinion. But I'll let everybody use their own common sense. I don't need to tell people shit. You can form your own conclusion based on this. That Brad Holder happens to be sitting out in the lobby when this guy walks out of this thing. And when they're saying, hey, we're going to we're going to make you feel better about Rick Allen. Well, 
you're not making him feel better about Rick Allen, but now you're trying to fool him into thinking that you're actually following up with Holder. So maybe that will placate him. So we didn't tell him shit about Rick Allen, about the strong case that we have against him. And this, is, again, is in August of 2023. So all those people out there, they got all this strong evidence again. If they had all this strong shit against Rick Allen, why wouldn't they say, look, dude, relax. We well, got I this. hope it's among Let me finish. The... We Sorry. got this guy nailed to the wall. And this is what we have. What excuse can you give me if they had powerful evidence aside from the shit that he's seen in the PCA uh, almost a year into the investigation? Why the fuck wouldn't they tell click that right then and there to shut his ass down? It didn't happen or to make him feel better because he was actually concerned. That's what I'm saying. That shuts right. him down. That's the, that, 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 you know what I mean, dude? It's like, it blows my mind. It blows my mind, not from the people that are on the side of common sense on this, but for the people that are on the other side of this that are just pretending like none of this shit exists. Those are the people I just cannot understand. And and I'm just going to touch real quick on a couple things. One, when the judge is talking about, you know, letting something in and saying it goes to weight instead of, of admissibility, the judge is indicating that it's admissible under the rules. So it's relevant because you can't, it's not admissible if it's irrelevant, but it goes to weight, meaning how much weight, how much emphasis I choose to put on this. So I'm going to let it be admitted, but I may find the relevance of it very nominal and only consider it to a very little degree. The other thing that I wanted to note is it would be interesting to know if the state has received or if they haven't are asking for the interview with Holder from this very day. He was sitting in the police station, presumably to be interviewed or have some sort of conversation with somebody. So you would think that that would have been, you know, turned over to the defense unless it went missing like the recordings did no i think they got this one they got they got the later interviews of him um so that i know they got but like we'll be able to touch in into that aspect of it when we get into mullins and the state giving their their reasoning or their excuse as to what happened to the original interviews like when you get to that and you start and, when, and we're getting close to it because baldwin's getting exasperated here and he could tell she's about to shut him down completely. Um, but when we get to Mullins giving his excuses as to what happened to all these day, hours and hours, 70 hours of interviews, the day after the girls, actually the, from the day that the girls are discovered through the 17th of February, three full days, the critical, the critical opening moments of the investigation the first 48, the first, they fucking lost all the interviews of everybody, not just Holder, but of everyone they interviewed. It's mind blowing. It really is. All right. Um, okay. So I left the police post as I was walking out. I noticed Brad Holder sitting in the front lobby. I went over and shook his hand, sat on his lap and give him a big kiss on his cheek. <laughs> I'm adding that obviously. Uh, I went out, uh, out into my car and drove back to Rushville. Question, after you drove back to Rushville, Rushville, how often, if ever, did anyone from law enforcement contact you about what had just been provided them? Answer, I was never contacted. Question, did you ever contact them? Answer, I contacted them. I contacted Detective Holman. And why did you do that? Answer, shortly after the Franks memo had been released, I was contacted by a friend of mine that stated that a female by the name of Elisa Cole, who was, who had a child with Johnny Messer, had a cell phone of Johnny's that she believed I might be interested in question. Were you aware during your, the course of your investigation before you kind of got off the investigation of a phone that you would have liked to have had answer? Yes. We searched for several cell phones belonging to Johnny Messer that Johnny would have been using during the time that Abby and Libby would have been killed. We actually referred to that cell phone as the Goldilocks cell phone. We believe that there might have been information contained on that cell phone. I Question. would surely hope somebody's out there trying to track down this uh, uh, 
Alicia Cole to get that Goldilocks phone over to the defense. All right. It... Wait for it. Sorry. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, question. Okay. So what did you do once you heard that somebody contacted you about a cell phone that belonged to Johnny Messer? Did you say in 2017? Uh, that is correct. What did you do then? Judge, may I renew my objection unless this Johnny Messer's cell phone relates somehow to Brad Holder? Uh, yeah. It does. Sustained. <laughs> did you continue? Mr. Paul, I, I don't know where I can go, Judge. I mean... Did you contact anybody about this phone to go from law enforcement side to pick up this phone with evidence? So like Baldwin is beyond right here. Like, like this is one of his like big moments coming in. And, and just so people understand, and I, and I wanted to preface going into this, that, that this, the scheduling for the day came up early, like early in the, in the morning. And, and, and goal was very clear. She's like, cause like, I can't remember if it was Rosie or if it was Baldwin said, look, you know, we, we've got a lot of witnesses on this motion to dismiss. We're afraid that this thing might not be able to get heard all in one day. She said, I scheduled this for one day and one day only plan accordingly. So when the, the motion to suppress or the motion for contempt bled into the afternoon, so it went past lunch and stops at about two 30. Finally, when that thing ends, like Andy had, I don't know how many guys in the hall, like how many, like he had at least five other witnesses that he was intending on calling. This was a big deal. He was like excited about getting this, this motion heard. And, and you're like, by the end of it, he's, you just see him. He just sits down we're, we're getting close to it. So you'll, you'll see uh, so he says, I don't know where I can go, Judge. I mean, did you contact anyone about this phone to go from law enforcement side to go pick up this phone with evidence that you thought might be on there from 2017? Answer, I contacted Detective Holman. Okay, and what happened? I checked with Alicia Cole when I spoke with Detective Holman. I explained to him the significance that we felt that the cell phone provided. Detective Holman said that he would make arrangements to obtain that cell phone. I contacted Alicia Cole and told her that a detective Holman from the state police would be contacting her to retrieve that phone. After approximately two weeks, I contacted Alicia just to make sure that, that cell phone had been recovered by the state police and it had not been. And then what happened? At that time, I contacted Brian Alvey, who's an investigator for the your criminal defense team advised him of the cell phone and went and retrieved the cell phone in your 20 plus years. How many times has a fucking cop reached out to us and said, Hey man, uh, I know this is going to be a really weird phone call, but, uh, there's this phone that we think that might have evidence that might be exculpatory or helpful to the defense team. You may want to go get it. How many times in, in our career has that happened to us, Allie? Um, none. Yeah, zero fucking 30. Um, all right. At that time, I want to read it again. I contacted Brian Alvey, who's an investigator for the criminal defense team, advised him of the phone, uh, the cell phone, and he went and retrieved the cell phone. So there's your answer, my love. The cell phone is now in possession of the defense team. Uh, question. Are you familiar with Cellubrite and how once... The, tell the judge what Cellebrite is and what you know or how you know how to use it. Answer. Cellebrite is a program that law enforcement uses to extract data from electronic devices. You can, for a cell phone example, uh, for a cell phone example, you can recover data that is currently on the cell phone and you can recover data that has been deleted from the cell phone. We know all about that firsthand, don't we, Bay? Of course. Uh, okay. You've had the chance to look at the results of a phone dump from 2023. Answer. I briefly looked at it. Yes. Okay. I want to hand you what's been, this is the exhibit I wanted so bad. I wanted to hand you uh, what's been marked as de defendant's exhibit C or should be. Are you familiar with this thumb drive? Answer. Yes, I am. Okay. What is that? Uh, this is the thumb drive that contains the extracted data from Patrick Westfall's cell phone. 
question how much data was on there in terms of the dates from what date to what date there wasn't judge may i interrupt with a preliminary question yes you may miss tiener did you already testify as to where the westfall phone dump came from no i did not testify to that i would object on foundation foundation question where did you get the phone dump information from answer from you sir question okay uh what i asked you to review that for me answer that is correct do you have specialized training in celebrate uh i have not been trained on the celebrate uh, program however i'm very familiar with the reports that are generated from the cell phone extractions but you're not trained i have not been trained by the celebrate company no and when you were a law enforcement officer, did you have access to Celebrate equipment in order to operate that and to complete examinations with regard to a Celebrate dump? Answer, when I was a detective, I was an investigator for the Indiana State Police Crimes Against Children Task Force. Any cell phone that we had that we were going to do a forensic examination on, we would take to the ISP, Cyber Crimes Unit. Uh, they, were, they would extract that data and then would provide me with the data that was extracted no other questions question and sir that phone dump that you looked at today that's what you have seen in other cases that's an extraction answer that is correct question what date did patrick westfall on his phone have for that extraction answer the first date of significant uh, extracted detail that i saw was on august 12th of 2023 what about the last date i did not review that question okay did you see anything of july of 2023 texts emails photographs anything like that answer no i did not question what about let's go back to april anything in april no sir question anything in january excuse me would council please approach and sidebar okay so which is interesting because there's no jury present like, what do they right. need a sideboard for? Yeah, like, this is just the, the shit she pulls. Like, like why, why do we need a sidebar when there's no jury present? What are you hiding, Gull? <laughs> like, like just the, the sidebars occur because there is a jury present and there's issues that have to be resolved quietly. Like, they'll either put white noise on, sometimes they'll excuse the jury out of the room, and then they have the discussion. It, I mean, it it's weird. possible she didn't want, and I'm just going to play devil's advocate. I know maybe it won't, people won't appreciate it, but it is possible that she was, you know, didn't want to embarrass them and be like, you know, but I, I understand she comes back out and That's sort hilarious. of says it, but she might have been telling them, this is your fault. You didn't do it. Who knows? But you're right. She should have done it on the record. Right. Either way. Transparency, you know. Right. If, if like you would think if it was because she, she did, like that does that's not in line with with how she feels about these guys, you know, like it right. would have been the I opposite if she if she had the chance to shit on them. OK, so the, gonna shit on them. Right. OK, so start. Line got 10. Uh, none of this was in your motion. Not one shred of this is in your motion. Your motion deals with a document dated February 17th, 2017. It is an FBI report of Brad Holder. And on the same day, strike that February 19th, the interview of Patrick Westfall. That is what you have complained about in your motion. Right. None of this is in your motion. This is the evidence to support the motion and to counteract Mr. McClellan's argument that there's not bad faith and that this is. This is very specific, Mr. Baldwin. You did not incorporate any of this information in your motion to dismiss. May I speak, Ms. Diener here, Your Honor? Sure. Our response about bad faith. We don't even get to bad faith unless they show that it's exculpatory and then in the alternative that it's potentially useful. We haven't even gotten to the potentially useful for the recordings that's the recording that's missing of Brad Holder. So our response about bad faith is after we get through whether we're in the category of materially exculpatory, which is the heading of their motion or potentially useful. And we aren't at either.
What you would learn, Judge, is that Patrick Westfall, his phone, he brought his phone into the police at the request, and that the phone that he brought into them only had four days, knowing that he was going there, that he brought a phone with no data on it, predating when he knew he was going in there, i.e., it's either scrubbed or he bought a new phone. And that goes towards judge showing that he had a predisposition or that he was trying to hide evidence. And when he's trying to hide evidence, that then goes towards, quote, well, if he was trying to hide evidence in 2023, what was he doing back in 2017? Then perhaps you should have pled that because you did not plead that in this particular motion that I am holding in my hand. She's in like, she's asking him to argue a negative, something that he doesn't know exists. It's like, like he would have been shot upon if he had put that in there as well. Well, I don't oh, know yeah. what it was in there. It, like for sure. Everyone would have been saying, Oh, he's just putting a bunch of stuff in there to get it out. The judge would have been all up in arms. Just put a bunch of not, you know, right. things not relevant in here. Right. Yeah, he's guessing. He's fish. It's a fishing. It's a fishing expedition. Yeah, like all that shit. Yeah, like like how is he supposed to know what he can't know other than the fact that he was told that there was a phone dump from 2017 and all it has is one month's worth of shit from 2023. And, and just so everybody knows, um, when we say exculpatory evidence, which is evidence favorable to the defense, whether it be on guilt or innocence, it also specifically includes impeachment evidence. Anything that shows bias, motive to lie, this is a shady M effort, something like that. That constitutes um, impeachment evidence and that constitutes exculpatory evidence. So his argument there, if he was trying to hide something in 2023, what is he doing back in 2017? For example, evidence that suggests that a witness was trying to hide something in 2023 may very well be impeachment evidence and surely is evidence that the defense would be entitled to. Hey, Allie, uh, the, the crowd is calling for you to do a grumpy voice for Gull. Okay, I was trying. I thought <laughs> I did. I'll be grumpier. All right, okay. be grumpier. Be All right, now Miss Diener is going to address the court. Unless you, were, you weren't done, babe. No, I was done, baby. Go. Okay. And if I may say, Judge, the content of the motion with regard to Patrick Westfall says that they have been given a narrative and there is no recording and they are speculating as to whether we're not telling them the truth about whether there's a recording. So I have a witness here to testify to that effect. So our preparation has been for the allegation of a dismissal based on destruction of exculpatory evidence. It is specific to a recording of Brad Holder on February 17 of 17 that was discovered missing or lost in August of 17. That's their time window. And I've given you a lot of leeway. None of this, none of this testimony, very little of this testimony deals with your motion to dismiss for destroying exculpatory evidence as you pled. You can stand there and tell me all you want, but this is what you pled, and I'm not hearing any evidence about that. In order to win on that, we don't this we don't have to plead everything that's going to happen in a trial. I mean the No, but you have to do in a motion to dismiss. You have to put the other party on notice, which you did, and they filed a particularized response to it. Now, I, let me just, I well, oh, you want to jump in? Yeah, I was just going to say that there is some truth to that, whether it needed to be in the motion or whether it needed to be disclosed beforehand. We've argued it on behalf of the defense that they need to have notice of what you're going to be talking about, which there is some validity to. I don't know if there had been discussions um, about what exhibits were going to be tendered, things of that nature beforehand. But, um, you know, I'm just throwing that out there that that they need some sort of notice as to what, um, you know, what's going to be raised at. But I, I, and you're right. And you're right. And that's clearly the, the correct counter from the state side of it. The, the problem from the defense side of it is how are you 
how are you arguing a negative? It, it has to be something by inference. You know, it's like we know Westfall had a phone from 2017 and there was a phone dump of it. But whatever he brought in in 2023 had one month's worth of data on it. Like, like, how are you supposed to argue? Like, all you could do is argue by inference. Right. Like, look, and we're talking this about guy disappeared all the shit on this phone in 2023. We have to assume the exact same shit happened back in 2017. You know, it's like, yeah, and I actually do, although I did say that about notice, you know, it's very typical that you put forth a pretrial motion, you know, making and making one argument that the evidence in support of that argument is not, you know, you don't you don't have to lay out every piece of evidence that you're going to use, you know, to support your argument. So. You know, I, I wouldn't expect for them to be like, oh, and I'm going to prove bad faith by X, Y, and Z. So although I did raise that there could be some validity in that regard, um, you know, again, it, it could have been accomplished with, you know, producing exhibits, you know, early, but that's not, that's not a typical, you know, requirement that they produce stuff early. And I, I don't know. I venture to guess that you were there for the motion that the state put forward. I mean, I doubt that they went through every single piece of evidence that they were going to put, you know, forth to uh, to prove that that the either, contempt shit. Yeah, but no, they well, did have discovery that they had to, which turn was a over bunch of useless it, bullshit. It was all right, like they, the, they they proved nothing, and in what they did, which was similar to what what. Baldwin did here is they brought up they they kept calling it a continuing leak and they had given them no to like no one had heard about a continuing leak like like he's oh because he was implying McClellan and I'm not going to get much into that because I don't waste a fucking minute of my time talking about that stupid ass motion but you know he, he's saying all right look this like Baldwin was talking to Westerman and Westerman was then telling forts and shit and so that was a continuing leak like an, like information like like Westerman told Fortson about the fucking Turco like the professor like so like he it was leaking he was leaking you know and he's like trying to make it seem like Baldwin who clearly had a relationship with Westerman this is before Westerman knows or before Baldwin knows that Westerman betrayed him and, and that you know and he's talking to the guy the guy has a law degree he was he thought he was his homie you know it's like it's like you were saying like Darren was was always your all right Darren is my civilian guy that I'm going to talk to about our theories, our strategies, and see if this shit will work. You know what I mean? All right, so, babe, read again. Start from line six, and then we'll we'll keep rolling. So reread. And I, I just did also want to note that there's a difference when we're talking about notice here because they're not relying on their own evidence. They're relying on the evidence that, that the state is already aware of. So a, a notice argument falls a little flat for, for that reason, in that it's the state's evidence that they're using to advance their arguments. Yeah. And, and I, I want to be clear, like, like there was no part of me that thought that this thing was ever getting granted. This case was never getting dismissed. So like, if you're like, I don't want anybody out there like, Oh, Bob thought they were going to dismiss. No, <laughs> I never thought they were going to dismiss the case. That doesn't saying that, like, but dude, I have to say it because the people on the other side of this, like, oh, Mon, I thought they were going to dismiss the case. What a bunch of bullshit! They didn't even plead it properly. Whatever the fuck they're going to say, and then that's not what I'm saying. Wait, like, do that last part again. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> so, but you know, the the fact of the matter is, I had every like like not a fiber of my being thought that she was ever going to be dismissing this case against Richard Allen based on this thing. However, that being said. I, I was I, wanting the evidence it, to support it to come out as much as as much as could be heard about because it, it's like it, it's a it's a long it's a it's a long story for them to have to build it like to show bad faith you have to kind of build up this entire thing that look judge there was a whole fucking other investigation going on woman like with the like legitimate dudes with legitimate evidence against these guys and they didn't give a shit. And that, like, if you now know that, Judge, because I know you didn't read the fucking memo, now I'm telling it to you. I'm, I'm really doing this motion, Judge, because I want you to hear the memo shit, because I know you didn't read it. 
Like we know that Baldwin doesn't think that she read it. So I'm going to come and have a motion where I'm actually telling you about all that shit, which is exactly what this was. So now she knows that there was a legitimate line of questioning and investigation that can continued on for years. And, and now she's heard it. So like that was, that was really, I think the, the bigger picture of what Baldwin was trying to achieve here. And you have to do that. You have to show that there was this, this other existing investigation that had legs that had stronger, thicker, firmer legs than fucking the case against Richard Allen. And that knowing that that allows you to get your mind to the fact that law enforcement very well may have intentionally have deleted anything having to do with Holder the day after the girls went missing. You know, I mean, like you have to do that in order to get her in her mind to that place. Cause when she doesn't read the memo, and she's just listening to the press. Oh, Odin, Odinism shit. This is crazy. You know, it's like, so I like, I get why he did it. I do. You know, that being said, I, I obviously did not think this was ever going to get granted. And like, who knows? Like, and at the end of the day, she is not the trier of fact. There's going to be a jury impaneled. What she does is she decides what comes in and what goes out or what doesn't come in or what doesn't come out in terms of evidence. And my big concern is that she is going to try to cap them off at the knees with their Saudi defense shit, you know, cause I, I forget who I was on with. I was on with Dave Hennessy and I asked him that specifically because I'm concerned about it. I said, Dave, what, like, like in Indiana, you know, what, like, what do you need to prove up? What, like, what offer of proof do you need to show in order for the defense to be able to move forward at trial with their alternate suspect theories? You know, and Dave gave a, a pretty, a pretty good answer to it, you know, but it didn't make me feel any better. You know what I'm saying? Are you reading the phone? I could tell you. I was trying to find you. some Cuban food to order before everything closes. Cubanos. Sorry, um, any right. food. Nah, girl, I want you to eat. It's late for you. It's an hour later. It's 10 oh six. You got to be starving. You have to feed your belly. Well, um, it's my right I know it's 10 o'clock. I it's legit. I was not being sarcastic at all. No, I'm just saying like, my belly's on the same time as it was, even though the time here is different. So it's oh, still, that's true. It's still right. on. It's all. It's still on central but time. It's going to close. Was the issue? All right. Um, all right. Um, so I'm going to repeat what the judge says. Okay. No, but you do in a motion to dismiss. You have to put the other party on notice, which you did, and they filed a particularized response to it. I well, if you're not going to allow me to do it. I can do an offer of proof. I don't know if the court was, they call it an offer to prove. And yeah, no, it's an I think it's supposed to be offer of proof. Okay. Uh, and we can move this hearing along a little bit more quickly. You can do an offer. They must call it an offer to prove. You can do an offer to prove. Sorry, wait, you can do an offer to prove. That's fine. Yes. Uh, as it relates to Pat Patrick Westfall on his phone. Uh, Miss Diener here, the missing as it relates to, to Brad Holder, what what are you what you have in your pleading? Brad Holder is <laughs> is missing the interview. That's what's destroyed, Mister. But well, Patrick Westfall too. No, he does not have a recording. This is about a lost recording. You've been given the narrative of Patrick Westfall. There is no recording. That's the point. You're alleging. That's the point. There's not a recording. James Luttrell. That's not the destruction of evidence. <laughs> Your dismissal is based on destruction of evidence. Yeah. All right. So let's get to that. Okay. And if you want to do an offer to prove, do an offer to prove. Okay. So that sidebar concludes. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, I'll do an offer to prove question. All right, let's move on to Brad Holder. You said you saw Brad Holder outside the interview room. Correct. When you left answer, I saw him in the lobby of the state police post question. What kind of questions do you, would you expect the state police to be asking Brad Holder in an interview as an investigator? Objection, judge speculation sustained. And by the way, everyone, the objections are for the record. She sustains it for the record, but it's an offer to prove. So they'll should be continuing along that line of questions without regard to the objections. 
Question, I'm handing you what's been, it's going to be marked as Defendant's Exhibit D. Can you identify that for me, please? Answer, yes. This is a thumb drive that contains an audio recording of an interview conducted with Brad Holder. Question, did you get a chance to review that? Answer, yes, I did. Mr. Baldwin, move to admit Defendant's Exhibit D. Your Honor, I have a couple more questions. Mr. Click, what date is this interview from? August 30th of 2023. The state would object based on relevance with regard to a missing recording from 2017, which is the subject of this motion. Uh, this is a Brad Holder interview, Judge, uh, that can be compared to the transcripts that are memorialized. One page, 100 words or something like that. Memorialization of the 2017 missing videotape. So I think that that's certainly appropriate and relevant. Judge, I'm sorry. Can you restate how that's relevant? I'm missing the connection. Well, there's a missing video in 2017, and then the state followed up with an interview in 2023, and what's contained in there, which, if anything is different, that's in here versus over in 2017, that would show that the missing evidence has value. So that's the relevance. Judge, the evaluation of the value of the missing evidence, again, the case law, which I'm sure the court's well familiar with, that is cited in both the defense's motion and the state's response, makes it very clear that with regard to the missing evidence, the evaluation is specific to the time during which the evidence went missing. That's in 2017. This interview in 2023 is not relevant to that time frame. Again, we're way beyond what the law requires for a motion to dismiss for destruction of exculpatory evidence. Your objection is well-founded. I will show it and not admit D. Uh, okay. Wait, is that, is that me last still? Last page, last line of 29. Oh, tw 29? Oh, sorry. I skipped. Um, okay. Sorry. Hold on. I can't see the very bottom of my page, so it's tough. It just uh, says, Judge, if what's contained in the memorialized, and then it goes on to the next page. Okay. Oh. Judge, if what's contained in the memorialized transcript or report from 2017 has different information than what is contained in the 2023 interview, how can that? I don't understand how that cannot be relevant. Based on your pleading, sir, it's not relevant. God, do you remember do you remember the days of frustration when like a judge is pretending like they just don't see the relevance when you know Yeah, I was going to say and I was going to wait till my next little part as the judge to speak that this one I've got not even a counter argument for how she's saying that he should have needed to prove to plead the fact that they interviewed him a different time in order to show what might be, it's, it, I'm dumbfounded by this argument that the judge is relying yeah. on right here. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a strong one. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, I will offer to prove then, if that's okay. I will summarily detail what Mr. Click would have testified to and what the exhibit would show. Is that okay, Judge? Yes. Make an offer to prove. Thank you. Uh, what you would learn from Mr. Click and his review of this document or this exhibit was that Brad Hold uh, West? Obviously, Brad. Brad <laughs> Andy's like, as you can imagine, he's probably super irritated at this point. So, Brad Holder, the 2023 videotaped interview, as well as the videotaped interview itself, is this: Brad Holder was never asked a single question about Elvis Fields. Brad Holder was never asked a single question about Johnny Messer. Brad Holder was never asked a single question about what he, what his ex-wife Amber Holder said that Brad Holder confessed that Patrick Westfall was involved in the case and was involved in the murders, that Brad Holder was scared of Patrick Westfall. All of that would be missing. Also, you would find out that in the 2023 interview, Brad Holder claims that he met Abby one time, but in the 2017 memorialized paper, he never met her. All of that. Judge, I renew my objection. The statements made by counsel with regard to Brad Holder not being questioned about Fields, Messer, or the ex-wife is all conjecture as to whether that information was even helpful to police. 
again, these people are not on the inside of the investigation and they're making an evaluation from the outside and then transposing what Mr. Click knows from reviewing interviews that have been provided to the defense or through his own investigation and its relevance as to what the law enforcement agencies knew in 2017 with regard to the interview of Brad Holder on February 17th of 2017 and the time period between then and when the interview recording was lost. It's a very specific time frame. It's their motion. I don't understand why we're so far beyond it. Judge. But I'd appreciate your consideration. Part of the evidence is also that we did not receive any of those videos for 10 months after they were owed to us. Three months, almost four months after Mr. Murray Cleland and his office was provided this documentation from Mr. Click, telling him that, quote, we have all the evidence of the other suspects, end quote. I think it's all relevant, but I'll move on. Please do. Actually, you know what? That's all the questions I have. Any cross? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Click, in 2023, you were no longer with law enforcement? That is correct. And you wrote a letter to the prosecutor about this investigation that you knew had been going on since 2017? That is correct. And you actually participated it, in it at the request of, you describe it being Ferency and Murphy, is that correct? Uh, wait, hold on. What, that what is correct. I'm going to say that. That is correct. But what I need your line number. First page of 32 now. And so you prepared investigative materials and collected evidence, and they were your connection to this investigation. Why would you have not been given all of your information so that it was forwarded on to the Unified Command? Well, they were provided with everything that was completed. Why didn't you do that? No, I did provide them with the uh, with that information. You gave it to Ferency and Murphy. Ferency and Murphy, yes. Okay, so as long as Ferency and Murphy passed it along, because you guys were all working together, there'd be no reason to think that they didn't have it, correct? That is correct. You make statements about Mr. Holder and Mr. Westfield, Westfall wearing Vinlander t-shirts. Does that mean something? Why do you know it's a Vinlander t-shirt? This is the best because the T-shirt said Vinlander across it. <laughs> you said you've known Elvis Fields for some time. Yes, I have. He's local in your area. Yes, he is. What's the mental capacity of Mr. Fields? I know he did not complete high school. He has. Does he have diminished mental capacity? That I do not know. Have you had contact with him? Yes, I have. Often? Yes, I have. I know he's not a smart individual as far as if he's been diagnosed with any type of intellectual disability or anything like that. I'm not aware. No other questions. Mr. Baldwin, do you have any questions? Question. Did you ever run into anybody in your time as a detective that had a low mental capacity that committed crimes? Answer. Yes, sir. Serious crimes. Answer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. It's you. Uh, I did want to supplement my previous offer to prove with the judge, if I may, and then I'll be done with him. Go ahead. Also, you would find that on this videotaped interview of Brad Holder, he is not asked about why he and Pat uh, Patrick Westfall were no longer friends, as described by Amber Holder, who said that it had something to do with a ritual god bad in a forest, in a forest by a river. Uh, with that, I'm done with this witness. Again, the state would object that it was not known to law enforcement at the time that the video went missing, and that's the reason that we're here. And your objection is well noted. You may step down, sir. Thank you. Would you give the exhibits to the court reporter, please? Uh, I'm free to go, Your Honor. I didn't subpoena you. Okay. He's at that's oh you know, me, right? sorry. He's asking if he's released and he's released from the defense. Okay. Call Amber Holder. All right. So I would note from that, Bob, that it it, it does seem he was subpoenaed. I know that he wasn't subpoenaed. Okay. All right. Let's stop talking about it then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um Amber. Okay, go. 
You're Amber. Uh, state your name for the record. Amber Holder. And <laughs> how old are you, Amber? I'm 33. Uh, okay. What do you do for a living? I'm a manager of public storage. I work 11 properties. Uh, you work 11 properties doing what? I clean the inside of the properties and the outside and help customers. Okay. And how long have you been doing that? Maybe a year and three months. Okay. I'll get right to this. Have you ever talked to the police about the murders in Delphi? Yes. Uh, how many times? Twice. Okay. Let's talk about the first time you talked to the police. Uh, you remember what, uh, where that happened? Yes. At my grandmother's. Okay. And how long was that the whole interview? Maybe an hour. Uh, let me see. Somebody's telling me to check my tax. Oh, I'm I'm at eight thirty. That's this. Uh, he was in the lobby when click left. Yeah. Oh, eight thirty. Okay. It was Nicole uh, Sleuthy. Okay. Uh, yes, I was at my grandmother's. Objection, Judge. I would ask that he establish the date of this to determine relevance to this motion. Was the yeah? When was it? When was it? I'm not sure. I'm not good with dates. Was it after the girls were murdered? Yes. They were investigating the murders? Yes. Okay. I renew my objection. It still needs to be within 2017 before the videos were, the video was missing. Uh, do you have the date that she was interviewed? Oh, I was, that's, oh, sorry, that's you. I guess. Um, do you have the date she was interviewed? I think that the court reporter is mixing up. It seems like it. Well, oh. maybe, I don't know. So no, you're right. So do you have the, the date that she was interviewed? That's you. Oh, I was, nope. I'm not. I'm asking counsel. Yeah. Was she, when was she interviewed? I think it was 2018. Okay. Then again, that would, your honor, that would be after. Would counsel approach, please? So again, here's the thing that that, that I, I'm kind of not really getting. So the state is arguing, their argument is, well, the defense has to establish that the police had reason to believe that this was exculpatory or would be useful at the time that this happened. But she's also acknowledged that this first step is establishing it was useful. So him establishing right now that, you know, maybe later evidence bared on its usefulness, I still think that's very relevant to these proceedings because I think it goes without saying that interviews of other suspects, of people who, um, you know, of, of other potential suspects, and I think in 2017, we've already acknowledged that, um, I don't know, babe, maybe I'm wrong. What, when did Click start his investigation? Right from the beginning? Yeah. Like, like very, like right in the beginning. <laughs> like right. immediately. To me, there is no argument in the world that the interviews of potential suspects that the police didn't know would be cleared yet, right? They don't know they're cleared. They go on to investigate them for a very long period. How in the hell is it at the time in 2017 before they're cleared, not exculpatory, or that the police wouldn't have thought it to be potentially exculpatory to another suspect? It's like circular arguing on her part that the judge is like, accepting if, if what I just said made sense to yeah you well it made everybody. it made complete sense to me right it, it's a, it's like that thing that we were talking about like like there's this this bizarre notion that he has to prove a negative or he has to prove something that doesn't exist you, you know what I mean which is like like impossible to do right you know she, she made a point of saying to the judge judge we've got two things they have to prove first they've got to even prove that, you know, it would have been favorable to them, that it was, you know, potential, potentially useful or materially, you know, useful, and they're already on bad faith. 
but by showing, which we kind of touched on before, by showing that um, people change their stories later and all these other things that he's showing that take place later, that's establishing that it was useful. The other avenue of this is, did the police know it was useful at the time? And that's where I am saying, if the question is, did police know interviews of a potential suspect who had not been cleared yet, <laughs> of a potential suspect would be useful if a third party suspect ultimately got arrested? Th there is no if, ands, or buts about the fact that at that point in time, the only answer that could be given is yes, because again, they hadn't cleared the person yet. So they didn't know what was going to come yet. So clearly, they right. would have had reason to believe it was going to be potentially useful. Exactly. And to, and to go exactly to the, the heart of your point, in order for him to show, like it, it doesn't like they're now pigeonholing him into the date that, that Holder was interviewed in 2017 when Baldwin, he's trying to show, okay, so for whatever reason, y'all decided to clear Brad Holder in 2017. They then learn of an interview with Amber Holder in 2018 where she's talking about him and Brad Holder being in, being in some huge fight or in some disagreement that ended their friendship that happened during a ritual that happened in a forest down by a river. How the fuck isn't that relevant to either them going back and saying, okay, you know what? We don't really know the time of death. Like we're pretending like we know what the time of death of the girls is for the public, but we don't know. We don't know what the time of death is. So Brad Holder's, uh, alibi that he was at work doesn't mean jack shit because they don't know when the girls were actually killed could have been anywhere from three o'clock until the girls are found in the morning it could have been anywhere under the cover of darkness under the moon whatever whenever it happens it could have been off site and the and the bodies are are dragged and staged all of those things are relevant and when she's pigeonholing them into just the statement itself without letting him get, I mean, he got some of it in, you know, right. but she's not really letting him make the argument and she's pretending like she doesn't understand what he's trying to do. Cause and that's what to ex over explain to the public. The factors that Bob just laid out is this whole puzzle of bad faith because, you know, all right, the, 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 um, state, the interview disappears they find out later more incriminating evidence against this very same guy. And as Bob just set out all these other factors, yet they had no, they did no investigation. They did not act as a normal investigator would as to this information, as to this very same witness, which goes to whether or not the first interview disappearing and other suspects disappearing was in bad faith. So these things do all connect together. And, you know, it's the only way you can show bad faith. Like, like, like I said, you're never going to get a cop up there. Who's going to admit that they intentionally destroyed evidence. It's not going to happen. So right. for like any judge to be sitting there pretending like that, they don't have to go through all of these steps in order to show why, what incentive would law enforcement have to destroy evidence? Well, we have, very, very plausible additional suspects who don't fit in with the Richard Allen tunnel vision theory that the state has landed on. That's right. why that that is your motive for them destroying that evidence. And wait till you, like wait till we get to Mullins. Like, did you order food yet? I'm, I'm getting uh -uh. concerned about you. Got to dude. All right, you got to order food. I Otherwise found some be... stuff that's still, but now it's getting close to that being closed too. I know. Get get your order in. Uh, uh all right. I forget where we were. Let's see twelve. Oh, I think you were you're at the beginning of the sidebar. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> I'll just do this taquerita because I can't find a Cuban place still open. All right, we're going to take a quick time out while Allie orders food. So how y'all yeah, doing? Answer some people's questions, like click on the star. Thing. How was everybody's uh, Wait, Easter? Wait, does anyone know about Mexican in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, man, you go, you go Cubano down there, man. I can't. It's too late. Oh, you shit the bed. 
Cabano's the way to go. Went down around Miami. Um, all right, let me see. I don't know how many questions there are so far, but there's a lot of generosity going. A lot of generosity happening. And y'all know, y'all know how we operate here. All the uh all the love will come post. Uh I might just have to do Italian. Italian. That's a spicy meat the ball, eh? You want a spicy meat? Do you want a meat the ball as a spicy? All right. Uh yeah, surprising, not not that many questions. Anyways, Allie, get the Cuban food. Yeah. Unravelings like, yo, get that Cubano. It's the good stuff. Um, all right. Well, Allie's uh, Italian's off key. trying to find some food. If anybody has a good question they want to throw at me, I'm going down to the the bottom of the va uh, the the vast the vast chat. <laughs> like I'm looking at shit from like eight thirty. Like, <laughs> look at your text. I'm like, oop. I'm really, uh, you know, uh -huh. time here. Yeah, this is with me putting a 20 minute or a 20 second, maybe a 30. So I don't know. I put a put a brick on the chat. Uh, meatball poor boys. Somebody's calling for. Um, so Keith had asked, let's see. Keith had a good question. Now, I can't speak to uh, Keith. I, I cannot speak to her outside of this trial. I've never practiced in front of her. Um, but. Keith had asked, is this par for the course regarding Gull's sustainment of objections, or is she out of the norm here? No, this is very, not only is this not out of the norm for this case, this is completely normal for every case. I mean, like defense attorneys, we build a very, very thick skin uh, in terms of not taking it personally that our, our, you know, any objections to things that we're trying to do are often sustained. Uh, we lose objections all the time. We lose motions most of the time. We, you know, we we get loose. To, like there's a, a a big amount of losing that goes on in defense work. So, yeah, none of this is out of the ordinary. Like you know, like her reasoning behind it is what I have the issue with, not the fact that she's sustaining the objections, as Ali just aptly noted. And which we're going to get into this this next upcoming oh, section is interesting um, that we're talking mm -hmm. about in the sidebar because it's going to go to exactly what Alice and I were just discussing. You know, trying to establish bad faith is a very difficult challenge uh, because you're having to kind of read through the tea leaves. You're having to really build a story, a narrative that shows, look, and, and they have it here. That's the thing. They have it here. This is such an unusual case because of what, and if you came late to the chat and you missed Click's earlier testimony, the things that were, were stunning to me were not the things that we now hear him saying out loud in a court of law under oath, staring in the faces of Tony or uh, of Doug Carter and Tony Liggett and Jerry Holman while they're sitting in the courtroom looking at him. Um, that's not what stunned me. You know, what, what stunned me is that when, you hear Todd Click saying that he is a law enforcement officer with a guy already under arrest is reaching out to the defense team to say, hey, man, like, yo, I, I've got some shit that you guys need to look at. Like, like that shows you the length that Click felt that he needed to go to get his investigation that him and Ferency and Murphy were doing to get that into in front of the defense. He felt that strongly about it. Like, like I want you to, if, if you follow trials, if you follow cases, I want somebody to try to come up with an example of where they can think of law enforcement, that, that somebody from law enforcement going to the defense directly post arrest of a, a defendant in a case and saying to the defense, Hey, I think I think you really need to see this stuff because that's a like like that thin blue line is a thing. And, you know, like click, he's a parole parole agent now, you know, probably for a reason. So, you know, for him to to go to the defense is like a huge thing. 
like out of anything that like bolsters claims from the defense and bolsters how much click believed in their investigation and believed in the strength of the evidence that they had put together against these guys. I mean, that's it. That's telling you exactly how strongly he felt about the evidence that they had collected about these other individuals. You know, I mean, like I, I've just never heard of it. You know, I've, I've never personally experienced a cop calling me up saying, Hey man, I got some good news for you, homie. Uh, you know, I got some, I got some shit that you're going to need to see. Uh, you know, it just doesn't happen. And, and it really, really goes a long way towards solidifying exactly to what these guys felt that they put together in, in this investigation. Hey, babe, should I get um, either? It's basically a California roll, but it has eel on top of it or... They don't have like regular spicy tuna. I don't understand what's going on. They have on. to. They have to. Have they have spicy tuna. tuna, but it's in, it's like an, a seaweed pocket, not a regular roll. Like I don't get it. Let me just see. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it's like it looks like this. Can you see? Oh, oh, oh. See it? Wait, what? That's what it looks like. The spicy tuna. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, they'll cut it. That's like the, that's what the role. All their other like. ones look like regular. All their pictures of other ones look like they regular. They have it cut rolls. into the pieces. Well, that is, that's what the roll starts like. You know, they roll it up and then they cut it into the little things that so you're you used to. So you think it'll be a regular spicy tuna? I mean, I, I don't want to say like definitively. I've never eaten at that spot. I mean, maybe they're going to send you that cigar looking like thing. That. Nothing. No. Here nothing is a like cigar that. of spicy tuna for you to eat. Um, all right, put the order in. You're killing people. All right. I'm just why did you have to get sushi? Like, that's like a super complex order. You got to go through all the rolls, got to figure out what you want. Where's the tempura? Where's your specialty rolls? CH says it's a hand roll. Hand roll. Yeah, I don't want a hand roll. Uh, all right. mm, I'm just gonna order this, just get it out. Put it out into the world. Put it out there. So this is a great question. Uh, Grace Cicada. So can Holder and the others be called by subpoena to testify a trial? They can certainly be subpoenaed. And wouldn't it be interesting if they all took the fifth? <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, like, man, it's just, I have to, whoa, love America. I'm not being a bossy husband. Never. Allison bosses me around. <laughs> Get it straight. Um, I'm real. I'm just concerned about y'all. I mean, if you guys don't mind my my lovely wife ordering Japanese dinner, I'm good with that. she could take as long as she wants. I'm doing it for your all benefit. Um, so, but look, man, like, like that's a that's a big question. Like, I'm certainly subpoenaing all those guys if I'm Baldwin and Rosie. There's no way I'm not. You know, and I'm going to see what their response is going to be, you know, and either they're going to get up there and they're going to take the fifth or they're going to try to answer the questions on cross, which would be amazing. Um, you know, because we just don't know what they have. You know, the, the thing is that we're not hearing what was on that phone dump uh, or anything else that they may have been able to. We don't know what was on the Goldilocks phone, you know, we don't know what they're going to end up finding out about the geofencing, maybe something, maybe nothing, but you know, all that's going to come out, you know, and like, I, I just want to keep making the point about the state's timeline. Like everybody who's so obsessed with Richard Allen being bridge guy, say he is bridge guy. <laughs> Say, it, say it's him, just for argument's sake. We don't know when the girls were killed. Like, everyone's just assuming that the girls were killed right then and there. And I have seen no evidence of that whatsoever. I mean, we know that there were people around in the area at the time. We know that there were civilian searchers at 530 that claimed that they were in the area that the girls were later found the following morning 
that are claiming that they weren't there when they were there on the 13th. I mean, if I'm the defense, I'm finding these civilian searchers, I'm vetting them to find out whether or not they're legit, because I don't know how anybody thinks that if you have civilian searchers that were in that area at 5 30, 6 o'clock, whenever, and they're like, yo, all right, I'm uh, ready. They're, you know, they're, they weren't there. That, that blows up the entire st like state's timeline, like completely. And if somebody's going to tell me that they think that that's wrong, uh, I'm going to call bullshit on you because it's not wrong. <laughs> the state's timeline is so tenuous. And there's no proof. They're not going to be able to put any proof on from the medical examiner as to time of death. And I saw somebody talking about, you know, the contents of the stomach. There is no evidence that is going to be presented, I believe, that is going to establish any kind of time of death. And, you know, obviously we're going to be getting into the crime scene uh, and, you know, the amount of blood that was found at the crime scene. And was that uh, significant in terms of the amount of blood that was lost? You know, is that the amount of blood that you'd expect to see at the scene itself? You know, if we're talking about, okay, well, it happened in the river. They they did it in the river. He did it in the river. You know, I mean, th then you're talking about the logistics of it all again. You know, then you're getting into the thing that everybody hated about the, the you know, the, the memo that it was impossible for one person to do it. If, if they're, you know, if, if, if it happens in the river so the blood can flow downstream and not be at the, you know, not be recovered at the crime scene itself because it's gone then you know how was that happening with one dude it's not you know i don't it's uh, there's just a lot here y'all i mean if you're here, if, if you put any critical any... thinking into this case like honestly instead of obsessing that the state's crime line or timeline is correct just assume that it's not assume that the, the this could have happened at any time during that night any time so, so just to Piggyback on that. One of the reasons we tell we as defense attorneys and we specifically, Bob and I, an innocent person never to talk to the police if they've locked in on them. And if they're asking to interview you, they have, is that when you have things like a time of death that could be open, as soon as you tell them the places that you were, you can guarantee their theory of the case, which is all it is, we all know, because no matter what type of, when you're dealing with time of death, there is always a range that it can fit into, but you can be sure as shit, it's not going to be when you told them that you were at church or, or when anything else that's a definitive time that they know you're not there. They use that information to figure out a way to still fit their theory into a box where, you know, you're, you're the person. So when they give a time of death, when the state presents a time of death, that is merely part of their theory. Uh, unless, of course, someone says, I saw them at 10 o'clock and someone else says, I knocked on the door at 1015 and they were dead. That's the only time you're getting a 15 minute window. Yeah. I, you know, like just like trying to to believe that there's a world that exists that neither of the one of the girls would be screaming their face is off. Like if this was going down, like right after they're apprehended is insane. And we right. know, we know that there's people in the area at that time. You know, and I, the, way it, the question that a lot of people have about whether they'd prosecute someone else. If, if Alan was found not guilty, the state and specifically law enforcement have gone public and said, we are looking for other people that were involved in this murder. So please continue to give us leads. So, you know. But how do they reconcile the fact that they've poo pooed these guys who seem to be very strong suspects? Now are they going to say, okay, well, we were just kidding, just kidding about Holder and Fields and Messer and Westfall. We were, we were just kidding. We were just kidding. Now, now we're going to arrest them and now we're going to try them in court. Like, how would know, you like to be like, speaking? I can't imagine how they can uh, do this dude, now dude. that they've gone so far into saying it's, you know, Sarah like Barra's question is what terrifies me about this case. Like that, Where that, that? The, the one that you just read that. Oh, Sarah Barra. Yeah. That is what horrifies me about 
getting yeah, each other was for the girls. Like that, that is the thing that that should have everyone up at night. Is that what do they do if Alan, like Alan, is, is he walks on it, and, and we're never gonna know because in in the United States it's either guilty or not guilty. It's not we find you innocent of it. So there's there going is to be an the option for the victim's family to petition the court for an independent, you know, a special prosecutor to be assigned to review evidence against a different, you know, a different suspect. At least I've seen it done in, in Illinois. Well, I, I think that the hope would have to be that the feds would step in and say, look, you know, but I, I mean, that would like, as to these That's guys, right. like if the unified command has already like made, you know, made their bed with respect to those suspects, then you have but to maybe like, if it's a hate crime or, uh, they did, they did involve a terroristic organization. It sounds like at some point, sure. I mean, there could be a way for the feds to hop in. There were, it would have to be that, that to, right. It would, it would have to be that line right there. Like that, that is where that these are, you know, they're, this was driven by a, a, a hate organization, you know, just like it, it's a, the white supremacist, whatever the case may be. I mean, that's how they get involved with it. And, and again, and they don't have to prove motive. You know what I'm saying? Like, like well, but they have I'll, to prove federal jurisdiction is what I mean. Yeah. But I mean, who's going to be sweating them on that? <laughs> well, the defense attorney is going to be sweating them on that, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I don't I don't know how successful they'll be. You know how successful defense attorneys are with shit like that. Right. You know? Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. If if they made these plans over the phone across state lines using separately, there's across state lines is one, you know, over the phone through the interwebs is another. So there's a right. lot of ways to get federal all right christy b threw a 20 dollar holla at you for the people uh, have been giving me some she, money for food over here because they want but they still want you to be grumpy gall so they don't want the food i'm gonna to <laughs> i don't get hangry like bob does what me never all right let's roll so you're at line 12 of 36 i'm at line 12 36 so okay. again this is this is the sidebar that's going on okay right Got it. I remember now. I was letting the people know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how to make myself any clearer to you that you've made specific allegations in your pleadings that you are held to. Calling witnesses up here that have been interviewed well past that date is not well founded and it's improper. I respectfully disagree with you, Judge. I think we plead and then we prove our pleadings through other evidence. The state and its charging information didn't include every single piece of information. That's not what we're here to talk about, Mr. Baldwin. We're here to talk about your motion to dismiss for destroying exculpatory evidence, where you claim that a document dated February 17th of 2017 of Mr. Holder and February 19th of Mr. Westfall was destroyed. That's the very narrow focus of what it is we are here for. Yeah. And if you don't have witnesses that are going to testify to these things, you're wasting everybody's time. As Mr. McClellan argued in his response, Judge, that they had to, we have to prove the state of Indiana or law enforcement knew back in 2017 that there was material or exculpatory evidence mm -hmm. or helpful evidence and also that there was bad faith. Uh-huh. And at the end of the road here, there is an argument to be made that back in 2017, based upon everything that you have heard, that the police, that there was, and that the police knew that there was exculpatory evidence on there and that where is that evidence? That's what I keep asking you. Where is that specific evidence? Because she wasn't interviewed until 2018. So how did the police know that in 2017, when you claim they destroyed it? Police are never going to say, quote, I destroyed exculpatory evidence. It's not going to happen. 
What is going to happen is the other other evidence comes out, like what's contained in the Franks memo that shows that there's an ongoing hiding of evidence, not refusing to investigate things like that. And this is what we're trying to do. I can't, if you expect that there's going to be a police officer that they're going to call or that I'm going to call that's going to say, yeah, I erased sculptory evidence that is never going to happen anywhere in the world. Judge, he has to show that it's exculpatory evidence based on what was known at that date or in that time frame before we have to show that it was not the result of bad faith. And if he shows it's exculpatory, bad faith doesn't even matter. If only, if he, if he can show exculpatory and or in the potentially useful category that we get to show that it's not a result of bad faith. So his first burden is to show that it is materially exculpatory. The video that's missing, that's his burden. It's an impossible burden, Judge, because it's missing. That's unfortunate, but then concede and shift to potentially useful. But that's what the case law says, Mr. Baldwin. Well. I can't change the case law. Well, this is how we prove it, by showing other evidences of police behavior, bad behavior, not, and then you can surmise as a judge, well, if all this happened then, then it could have happened back then. Your Honor, I'm sorry, that's not what the case law indicates. No, that's not what the case law says, sir. <laughs> and if that's all you have, then we're done. Then I will offer to prove. No then we're done if that's all you have. I'm going to offer to prove, Judge, an offer of prove, and then we'll be done. We are done, sir. For the record, they have a right to offer to prove so the Court of Appeals can understand, you know, what we're doing, and we will have no record unless I offer to prove, Judge. Well, you can sum up your offer to prove, Mr. Baldwin, but again, if all of the evidence that you have is after the dates that you allege, then your offer to prove is. If Amber, thank you, judge. Sidebar concluded. Mr. Baldwin, if Amber Holder were allowed to testify, she would tell you that the police, including Jerry Holman and the other people that were deposed by the defense council in August of 2023, have never talked to Amber Holder since August of 2023. She would testify that Brad Holder talked about the Delphi case, that Brad Holder told her that he and Patrick Westfall had a falling out over a ritual in the woods near a river because Patrick Westfall wanted to up the ante from animal sacrifices. If Amber Holder were allowed to testify, she would tell you that Patrick Westfall, according to Brad Holder, committed these crimes. He is protected by powerful people. He would also, she... She would also testify that she saw on Brad Holder's phones girls that he knew that he posed on the ground with sticks and that she knows are runes from her own heathenism belief system that were runes on these girls in the form of sticks and that he had them on his phone and that there were multiple photos on his phone. And finally, that she would also testify that Brad Holder knew Abby Williams much better than he told police. He told her that he had met her several times. That is the end of my offer of proof in this witness. Thank you. Do you have any questions for her, Miss Deaner? I have no questions for this witness. You may step down, ma'am. We have no other evidence, Judge. The All right, Miss Deaner. Uh, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I did. I wanted. I wanted to. I apologize. I wanted to ask the court to take judicial notice of the Frank's memo as it relates to this request to dismiss charges. That included Jerry Holman's deposition. I would also ask for the court to take judicial notice. Well, I was going to move to admit, well, I think the Franks memo taking judicial notice of that will be sufficient for what I need to do and argue. Thank you. When did you file the Franks motion? Uh, September 18th, 2023. All right. I will take judicial notice of that specific Franks motion filed September 18th, 2023 and the exhibits contained in it judge as also part of that oh and the supplemental franks the second franks motion as well 
uh, as we'd asked for its exhibits as well. That was filed, I believe, October 3rd of 2023. So you don't wish me to take judicial notice of the supplemental motion for Frank's hearing that you filed on October 2nd? <laughs> I do. I must have. I thought it was October the 3rd. It was October the 2nd. Well, there was one filed October 2nd, and then there was one filed October 3rd. And then there was one more recent, and I'll just throw that in as well. For you to take judicial notice of the one filed a week or two ago, I don't remember the date for the purposes of this argument. And when did you file that one? <sighs> I don't have that at the tip of my tongue here, Judge. It was a week, probably two weeks ago. I don't see one filed two or three weeks ago. Give me a second. I just don't have it, but I know it was filed. Well, I can't take judicial notice of something you can't tell me about. March 13? March 13th. Well, I'll take judicial notice of the Franks motions on September 18th, October 2nd, October 3rd of 2023, and March 13th of 2024. Uh, is judge, does that include all the exhibits, which I'm asking for judicial notice of all the exhibits as well? I don't see exhibits attached to this last one. Yeah, there. I, I don't think there were on that one. I don't see exhibits from the ones in October either. The, just the first one. Ms. Diener, you may proceed. Thank you. The state would call Steve Mullen. Direct Office examination Mullen. of Stephen oh, Mullen. Sorry. sorry. Go ahead. You, you say oh. it and then I'll say it. Oh, direct examination of Stephen Mullen. Officer Mullen, you've already been on the stand today, but I'm going to ask you to repeat some of that information since this is a separate hearing for a separate purpose. Okay? Yes. Please state your full name, spell your first and last name, and tell us where you're employed. Stephen L. Mullen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-M-U-L-L-I-N. -L -L -I, I am an investigator with the Carroll County Prosecutor's Office. And when did you begin as a prosecutor's investigator? In January of 2020. The investigation for Abby and Libby was well underway by that time, was it not? Yes, it was. What was your position in 2017 when the murders occurred? I was the chief of police in Delphi. And I believe we covered this as well, but how many total years do you have in law enforcement? 42. I believe you indicated that you had been with the Delphi PD, then with the Carroll County Sheriff's Department as a detective, then back with the city as chief, and now with the prosecutor's office. Is that correct? That is correct. And what is your role in the prosecutor's office with regard to the state versus Richard Allen? I handle and manage the evidence, most of the evidence in the Richard Allen case and process it and make sure the defense has it in discovery. So you're cataloging it and keeping track of what's been passed on to the defense. Is that correct? Uh, I am, yes. I'm sorry, Ms. Diener. Whose phone is going off? It, it almost sounds like it's in the next room. <laughs> uh, I apologize, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, it is ringing. Oh, so McLean says, Judge, there's a phone right here, too. I don't know what, what that is. It was turned off, but now it's on. Is this yours also, Mr. Baldwin? Yeah. Oh, I can grab that later. I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt your... Um, I'll resume my questioning. Are you familiar with the Brad Holder interview of 2017? I am. Is there only one? That's correct. May I approach, Judge? You may. Mr. Mullen, I'd like to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 1. Do you recognize that document? Yes, I do. Okay, and how would you describe it? Uh, that's what's called an Orion document. In other words, it's a narrative of a report which Special Agent uh, Adam Pohl created after his interview with Brad Holder, and that narrative was placed into the Orion, FBI Orion uh, right. RMS report system. That is part of discovery, is that correct? Yes, it is. And the, that interview was on what date? It was done according to the report on 2-17 of 2017. And is Agent Pohl with what agency? Uh, Agent Pohl is a special agent with the FBI. And he was assisting at that time? Yes. With the investigation? Yes, that's correct. The state would move to admit Exhibit 1. No objection. All right, without objection, one is admitted. Question, sorry. 
question, or I'll just do answer, but I'll start here with question, question. Oh, wait, no, we're switching on and off, Jesus. Sorry. I guess I do need food for my brain to work. You're crushing question. it. <laughs> you indicated that report is part of Orion and would be contained in discovery. With regard to preparation for today's hearing, are there other places that you know that particular narrative to be located within discovery? Uh, yes, that narrative would also be in the FBI general reports uh, that were furnished to us in discovery. And did you prepare, oh, judge, may I go back to exhibit one? We would ask that it be admitted under seal because it is discovery that has a protective order and contains discovery information. I think that would be appropriate. It's the report. No objection. Of Brad Holder. All right. I'll show it sealed then. So I'm sorry. You compared documents with regard to discovery on each disclosure or each disbursement to the defense. Is that correct? Yes. I'd like to show you what's marked as States Exhibit 2. Just check all the pages. Make sure you recognize the entire document. Yes. Do you recognize that 19 page document? This is an example of the itemized list of discovery, which was given to the defense and they were signed for the document, signed the document as having reviewed the items listed in each page. So you use this to keep track of what you've given them and on what date it was provided. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Judge, may I leave a copy with him in order to? Sure. State would move to admit exhibit two under seal. No objection. All right. Without objection, two was admitted and sealed. Now, can you point to that document and provide us information about when this narrative report of special agent poll from the 217, 2017 interview of Brad Holder would have been provided? That report should have been provided in the disbursement titled 04 Allen, dated as received by an agent from Mr. Rosie's office on February 13th, 2023. And when you look at the discovery disclosure, that's number 04, by looking at that, would a person unfamiliar with the evidence drives or how they're named know that this report is contained within that discovery disclosure? The disclosure says that there was a 3.5 inch SATA internal hard drive containing the files of four Allen with several files and also a box con uh, containing hard drives. This is also contained in the FBI documents then. Uh, and we also maintained a copy of whatever was given the defense and a quantification of the data that was given to them on site in a particular file that goes along with this document. And so the report that you've identified in exhibit one you identified as an Orion report, and you believe it to be contained in disclosure number four? Oh, four. Oh, four, yes. Yes. And on that was on February 13th 20 of 23? That's correct. And then in preparation for today, did you also print out screenshots that would show what's contained within discovery disclosure number four to be certain that the FBI reports, the Orion reports, and the state police reports were all contained therein? I did. Here's state exhibit number three. Can you identify that? It's three pages. I can. And can you describe it for the court? Uh. This is a screenshot taken from the computer screen, which displayed the files, which are contained in this February 13th of 2023 dispersal of evidence. It shows the FBI files, ISP files, some search warrants, the 04 discovery receipt actually, and then one, two, three, four, five Excel documents, which quantify the data contained on the hard drives. And if anyone just audibly heard my, and my, I roll it was looking at this app that the food has now been delayed another 20 to 35 minutes, <laughs> 20 to 40 minutes beyond what it already was. Good thing you okay. don't get hangry. <laughs> I know, but I get whatever. I get something, I guess. <laughs> All right. Back in back in roll. And okay. And then on subsequent pages, what does that provide for reference? 
Uh, thank you. The subsequent page, the next page, shows the ISP report, which at this time was redacted, and it shows three separate files. They received three separate files because the report in their system was too large for one particular case report. The next page shows the file, which had the FBI general reports in it. And then the next is in Orion, the download of the Orion file dated 12 to 2022. Now, the interview by Agent Pohl of Brad Holder was subsequently discovered that the audio slash video recording was no longer available. Is that, that correct? Is, that is correct. Can you describe the circumstances and how you learned that it was no longer available? Would you like me to begin? Start with a description of where the interview recording was kept. At the beginning of the investigation, we started out at the Delphi de Police Department. And at that time as chief, I just installed a new interview system. It was a DVR, which we had put in because we didn't have anything sufficient in the county to be able to record interviews within the city of Delphi. So as we used the facility at the Delphi Police Department for the investigation process, it became natural for everyone to use the interview uh, room at the city police department, which was located downstairs inside the police department. As interviews were conducted, an officer would go into the interview room, flip on the switch on the outside, illuminate a blue light to indicate the recording was operating. And when they concluded, they would shut the interview room, uh, the recording, uh, they would shut the interview room, the recording off by turning the switch off. The DVR was located inside the squad room at the police department, and it was sitting on top of a filing cabinet. At that time, I was more or less obtaining the video off of the DVR for the officers at the request so they could attach it to the reports. And you were not part of the lead agencies for this investigation. Is that correct? Uh, as chief of police, I was not part of the investigation, but I had become part of the unified command somehow. Because of your position as chief of police in Delphi? Yes. And so the lead agencies would be whom if you know uh indiana state police carroll county sheriff's department and obviously the fbi okay and so tell us about the discovery of loss of video that includes the brad holder february 17th 2017 interview all right hold on i gotta i want to take off my headphones they're starting to kill me uh, i'm gonna go out here speak see if i can hear you Hello. Ah, damn it. You can't. Well, I did say that softly. No, no, no. It, it's still oh. in the headphones. All right. Um, you have to unplug the headphones, I think. No, I got to switch it. To, I tried to switch it to the Mac. Uh, did you try pulling out the headphones, though? No, it's like, no, I don't need to do that. It's like, for some reason, just not take. Around August of 2017, I went into the police department to recover a video of uh, off of the DVR, which I believe was unrelated to this particular case and noted that the DVR was rec uh, recording continuously. That meant that any video that was on the DVR prior to the date where it recorded up to was gone. It was no longer there, no longer recoverable. I thought, or I, through my investigation, found that the last date of the interview was either the 19th or the 20th of February, 2017. So unfortunately, all of the interviews that had been conducted during that period of time and after the crime, homicide was discovered up to that date. We're gone. Immediately, when I discovered that a recorder was con uh, recording continuously, I unplugged it <laughs> and contacted the vendor. We determined that the videos were gone and somehow that the settings had been changed in the DVR to only record when the switch was activated to record continuously. And we have no idea how that could have happened. And have you consulted with the vendor about that particular issue to discern whether it was from a person versus a spontaneous event like electricity going out or unplugging the equipment? I have. I talked to the vendor and he has told me that on many occasions with the DVRs, which he uses or sells, that the power surge or unplugging the DVR could change the settings in the DVR so that it would record continuously. So the murders of the girls is February 13th of 2017. And that's when they're reported missing, correct? Yeah. Yes. And the investigation began as soon as the bodies were found. Would that be fair to say? Yes. 
And then your discovery would indicate that interviews conducted in the in that interview room with that DVR were missing from 2000 and something until February 20th, but not including February 20th. I think there were still some still available to be seen on the 20th. Okay. There might be some missing, but some are there from the 20th. Yes. And I should also add that some of the audio was missing, even for the times where there was actually video visible. So there may be video that's visible, but the audio randomly sometimes is not available to be heard. Now, this makes no fucking sense. No. Either it's overridden or it's not. Right. Either it's there you're or telling it's me not. they sell this shit to cops that it doesn't back up somewhere, like a at least a couple hour. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we get like a day. Ah, it's well, just it's just hard. wait, because there is no proof whatsoever other than this guy sitting on the stand saying it happened at this time. Like, like there's no phone records to show that he actually called the vendor that they had these conversations and there were mutual conversations. Like, just wait till you keep it like there's the, they produce no evidence to prove that this happened even at that time, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. All right, keep going. Okay. And did you or anyone that you know of intentionally leave the recording on so that it would delete interviews? Absolutely not. How dare you, madam? Oh, and you've, you, 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 you know, the mind of every single person in the, you know, police department. Okay. Do you consider this to be human error or just a spontaneous event with the DVR recording since you're an expert on this kind of thing, which obviously isn't in the transcript? Uh, that is the only explanation I can provide. Now, during that period, time period, was there also a follow-up interview with Brad regarding Brad Holder? Is that correct? Follow-up interviews to finish the lead or tip investigation. Is that correct? Could you be more specific in your question, please? Sure. When Brad Holder was initially interviewed. Objection what leading. <laughs> what was going on with the investigation during the first few days where the officers would be like special agent poll would be sent to make contact with someone? Can you describe for us what was going on? My, rec my recollection of the process was as each day would happen. We would start with a meeting at the beginning of the day and tips and leads would be assigned to officers to follow up on or throughout the day as officers became available. They would follow up on the tips and leads as they had time to do so. If people walked into the city building as a way to provide information to the officers in the investigation, someone on station would take that interview and talk to the person who was providing the information. If someone came to the Carroll County Sheriff's Department, they would either be instructed to come to the police department so they could talk with them there or, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a phone number or contact information would be forwarded to someone in the command structure so that they could be followed up on as soon as possible. And were instructions given on in the morning of these daily meetings about use of the DVR if someone wished to use it? Yes, they were instructed as how to turn the recorder on and to be sure to turn it off afterwards. And when you discovered that it had been continuously running, did you look to see if someone had left the switch on, which would cause it to then continuously run? Uh, thank you. I did, but I knew it wasn't on because the switch was located in a very conspicuous location in the hallway at the police department. If I were to walk in the police department through the door, from the outside, I would immediately see the blue light on in the interview room switch, uh, and I would realize somebody left it on, and so it would be turned off. On that day, there was no light on. Okay. And the actual hard drive in this DVR, how much data could it hold? I believe it was, I'm sorry, uh, I think it was six terabytes. My, rep or, uh, my report reflects the size. It's quite a lot? It's a lot. Okay, so my question to you is, during this time period, between when the first, well, let's go back to the way that leads were conveyed. So you have these meetings each day, officers come, you have this contact with them to give them instructions. Would it be fair to say that you have different officers pretty much every day, depending on who's available? It's quite fair to say that there were different officers every day. There were officers who worked 
within the departments who were coming every day, but there were also officers that came outside of the Carroll County Sheriff's Department, ISP. There were officers from West Lafayette, Lafayette, Tippecanoe County, Sheriff's Department, others. In fact, Special Agent Adam Pohl and Hammond Police Sergeant Christopher Gouty, who appear on these reports, or is it Goute? Right. Are not local officers? No, they are not local to our area. And so in what capacity were they at these meetings or assisting? Special Agent Pohl and Christopher Goti were or Guti were there to assist us in the process of following up on tips. And they, like the others, would be there at the beginning of the day and receive instructions or throughout the day uh, receive new instructions on who to go interview and follow up on. Can you give us a brief description of what a person in their capacity would be asked to do when following up on a lead or tip in order to be useful to the investigation? They would seek out the information from either the seek out the person they needed to talk to, uh, needed to talk with and then interview them concerning the information that was either provided about them or from them. Or from them. And then if that person was, would there be anything about the person that might cause the officer to need to do more than just take an initial interview? For example, find out where they were on the day of February 13th or February 14th? Yes. All the officers were asked to follow up on that completely or as much as possible to determine where they were at on February 13th around the time we believe the homicides were to have occurred. Okay. So that brings me back to Brad Holder. Before the video was lost or discovered, lost in August of 2017, and after Special Agent Pohl did his interview on February 17th of 2017, was there additional follow-up with regard to Bradley Holder that you know exists because of your intimate knowledge of the discovery and taking care of reports with regard to this case? Yes, there is. And do you recall what it is? I'm sorry. Do you recall what it is? Uh, yes. Yes. I'm going to show you what's marked as States Exhibit 4. Uh, I apologize. Can you identify that? I can. Okay. Can you describe it for us? This is a report which was completed by Special Agent Rich Davies of the FBI. It details follow-up, which was done and relayed to him by grid officer, which is a task force officer assigned to the FBI, Fred Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, Ms. Diener. It's a beautiful day for a neighbor. Won't you be mine? Uh, where he followed up on Brad Holder's work history on the date of February 13th, 2017. Okay. And so that would be a lead follow-up, correct? Yes. Yes. And did the content of that provide information as to Brad Holder's whereabouts during that particular Oof. day? What was that noise? Leave? What? I've, there was a horrible screaking noise that almost blew my eardrums out. It's it's this chair that I'm sitting in. Is there a different chair? That chair keeps squeaking, like it's like it's a very squeaky chair. Is Stand there like by. a stable chair? And by there's a like a little. I was going to tell you a while ago. It's very squeaky. All right, stand by. Squeaky wheel. Oh, wow, she left. All right, so uh, let's see. I want to go through, take this opportunity to go through some questions real quick. Let's see if we got anything good. What's good? Uh, okay. Okay. See a lot of angry comments. A lot of angry comments. You're muted. So I'm sitting on like this ottoman now. Wait, let me, uh -huh. let me check this out. That must be so cute. <laughs> oh gosh it's getting so close but still they moved the time up a little bit but all right let's keep pounding through because the last thing we need to do is have you eating sushi while you're on oh yeah you guys are being <laughs> if sushi shows up i'm jamming a couple pieces in my mouth Graham, people will be like oh my god did you see that part where she ate sushi you on the won't see. you won't see <laughs> I love oh, them. Sorry. Kind of cool. So cool. All right. So, um, so I think we were, I'm going to uh, start back at okay. Okay. And so that would be a lead follow up, correct? Yes. Yes. 
And did the content of that provide information as to Brad Holder's whereabouts uh, during that particular day when the murders were believed to have occurred? Yes, it did. Okay. So with regard to, to leads being assigned to officers, would this particular, would this lead to a particular event with regard to lead follow-up with unified command? Does it put it in a particular category? Is it considered completed for the time being? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it completed the investigation considering, uh, concerning Mr. Holder. So I just want to flesh this out. So this is the day. What was this? Is this is the 14th. This is the 14th. Is that the day? I think it's the 14th. So it's said, the, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This is after February the 17th. 17th. This is the 17th. So this is three days after the girls are discovered. And we know there is no time of death established. And Brad Holder comes in and says, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I clocked in. I was at work, you know, from like uh, whatever till five. And they say, oh, you're good, man. You're good. Even though they don't know the time of death. So it's just so funny because we had that with one of our alternate suspects in Garcia. They yeah. cleared him the exact same way. And then our investigator went out there and they were like, well, you know, he people can come and go. I mean, that's, that's loosey goosey around here. I'm not even talking about that. I know you're not yeah, even, like, getting I'm not even that. talking about like, you know, I've heard all kinds of shit. Oh, he works for his, like his cousin owns a company and they'll fuck it. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about, there was plenty of time after 5 PM or 5 30 during the course of this entire 22 hours that this guy would have had plenty of time to do this. Plus, That's if it point. wasn't only one person, which they didn't know at that point, and they still suspect to have been more than one person based on law enforcement's public announcements, um, he could have been at work and then met up with his crew. That's what I'm saying. Between the kidnapping and then the ultimate. That's end of exactly what I'm saying, man. I agree. Like exactly what I'm saying. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, it completed the investigation concerning Mr. Holder. You're at line 20, babe. Gotcha. Unless something new became available. Correct. Okay. During the time period between when the first interview was taken and recorded and the date that you were made aware that the first recording is missing, are these the only interviews of Mr. Holder that occurred? Yes. And the second interview or the second report really isn't an interview of Mr. Holder. It's a follow-up about Mr. Holder. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so at that time, the video was lost, destroyed, whatever terminology one might want to use. Was Brad Holder a key suspect in this case? No, no, he wasn't. The state would move for the admission of Exhibit 4 under seal. Any objection? No, I hadn't. Uh, have you given it to me? All right, I'll show 4 is admitted without objection and sealed. <laughs> yeah, no objection, Judge. I'm sorry. And I just want to note how she did that before he even said whether or not it had, it had been provided to him before she admitted right. it. But uh, judge, I did admit exhibit three. That was the three pages of screenshots. Did I? You did not offer it. No. The state would move to admit exhibit three with regard to the screenshots. It's a three page document. No objection. All right. I'll show three is admitted without objection. In fact, during the first seven days of the investigation from February 13th until February 20th, the period of time where the audio video recordings are missing, was anyone considered a key suspect to your knowledge? To my knowledge, no. Do you have any knowledge that Patrick Westfall was interviewed? Yes, I do. In the February of 2017? Yes, I do. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 5. It has two pages. Can you identify that? I can. And what does that document contain? This is a report that would have been found in the FBI general reports given to the defense in discovery, detailing an interview which took place on Sunday, February 19th, 2017, uh, conducted by Special Agent Adam Pohl and Grid Officer. I'm sorry, Officer Guti with the Hammond Police Department, where they did an interview at Patrick Westfall's residence of Patrick Westfall. 
And is that particular document also contained within discovery as previously testified to? Yes. In the same location as documents with regard to Brad Holder? Yes. And, and just so people know, uh, when, when this thing was first filed and Allie and I went through and read the pleading, it was filed by the defense. Allison predicted, which will be exactly what we will read when she rules on this, is that these summary reports were a will be a sufficient replacement for the recordings. That is 100% unequivocally what she will hold. And that, that that that's what she'll rely on. That these summary reports, these narrative reports, were were more than ample to to let the defense know exactly what occurred in these interviews. I, I disagree with that from just like a technical position. But as we both knew, there was no chance in hell that she'd actually dismiss these. I mean, no one's dismissing a case like that on something like this no when way. there's a backup. Right. You know. She's, she's going to say it's sufficient. She's going to say that the summary reports are sufficient, even though like I was when when Andy's doing his cross, I'm like feverishly writing cross examination questions down that I desperately wanted to tear out of my little journal and like pass them. <laughs> pass them like, like, man, you got to ask this fucking question, bro. You got to ask this question. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you were sitting right next to me, you would have been like, it would have been like you and me at trial. Like you just, I'm like, write it down. I'll write it down. You're whispering in my ear, write it on the paper. All right, let's go. Um, In the same location as a document with regard to Brad Holder. Yes. In FBI, in the FBI general reports, and in Orion, and it is, I believe, it's in Orion. Yes, the state would move to admit Exhibit Five. No objection. Show Five admitted without objection. There have been some questions raised about whether a video of Patrick Westfall exists or has been destroyed by the state. Do you have any knowledge about that? Uh, one never existed. And what do you rely on for that information? Well, they went to Patrick Westfall's residence, one, and it was uncommon for the FBI to record their interviews. Two, we talked with Spe uh, Special Agent Pohl, who uh, told us that he did not record the interview by any means and only memorialized it in his report. And just to reiterate, even though you've already answered this in a general sense, was Patrick Westfall a key suspect in 2017? No, no. God, no. Of course not. Did you make attempts to retrieve or somehow recreate lost video from the continuous play of the DVR? First of all, I contacted the vendor, <laughs> like the vendor thing. Uh, and we discussed options for recovery. And then I presented the DVR video, excuse me, the DVR DVD to the Indiana State Police to see if they could recover the video. It was sadly never recovered. It was never recovered? Correct. In the discovery disclosures, did you share with the defense that the DVR for that time period of February 14th until the 20th had missing files? And if so, in what way? Well, from my memory, I believe that I informed the agent of Mr. Rosie's office that there were problems with some of the video and that they could try to recover whatever video that they could. But they had, in essence, the same thing that we did. I did not document that in any way at the time of the release at that stage before they withdrew themselves from the case. So that's just hysterical, right? That this guy who's like, I just document the, you know, I'm making sure discovery goes, happens to use the words before they withdrew themselves from the case. That's sweet. <laughs> I mean, it's just. It's just like, oh, we're all going to have a powwow about how we refer to this. And that's the only words we're going to, right? you know, exactly. they, before they withdrew themselves from the case. Right. Okay. Resuming. Okay. Yeah. So on the discovery disclosure or transfer to defense that we referred to as the zero four based on the number that's on the top, it's from February 13th of 2023. That contained these interviews in written form, but is that the same day or time when you would have transferred any audio recordings or is it possibly on another date? I'm sorry, Ms. Diener. Can you rephrase that question? Yeah. The 04 disclosure that you talked about that contained these written reports from FBI and Orion from February, February of 2017. 
if there was video recordings that were also given, would they have been at that same time or some other disclosure? I'm sorry. I can't remember exactly when I gave them what I gave them at this point. I'd have to look at my records to be able to refresh my memory. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's a lot of information. And at some point, the defense specifically asked for the video of Brad Holder. Is that correct? Yes. And was a detailed response provided through a discovery disclosure? Yes. And indicated to them that there were lost recordings? Yes. And his was one of them? Yes. Was Brad Holder's the only recording that was lost? <laughs> Vince, no. God, no. No. We lost everything. We completely shit the bed. Okay. Okay. Added for emphasis. <laughs> Added for emphasis. Okay. And the recordings weren't just for this investigation, were they? There were other there were other investigations that were probably conducted during that period of time in the same interview room that were destroyed as well. Probably. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you've looked into this then. And do you have any way of recreating a list of all the interviews that happened during that time frame? I do not. And if officers did what was expected, which is write a narrative for the interview that was recorded, then where would that information be contained? So let me, before I answer that, so if he, if none of these cops were writing down on like a piece of paper or somewhere who they were Dude, interviewing. This asshole keeps going the wrong way. He he was on the block. He was on Remember the... kids, she doesn't get hangry. <laughs> <laughs> him, are you lost? Are you lost? Like what is happening? So but do you know what I'm saying? Like like they're saying so he she asks, "Do you have any way of recreating a list of all the interviews that happened during that time frame?" He says, "I do not." So if they don't have a list anywhere and they no longer have the video, how can they remember two or three weeks down the road when they're turning around to write the narrative, who the writing narrative is about? Do you understand what I'm saying? She's not listening. No, I'm not listening. I'm telling this guy. <laughs> All right. I want to make this point. I want to make this point. All right. Because like, it's a good one. Okay. How, how are any cops, if they're not keeping a note, cause she's already asked, do you have any way, are you listening? I don't want to say yes, it again. Do you have any way of recreating a list of all the interviews that happened during that time frame, Right. And, and his answer was, I do not. So that means that none of the cops were writing down who they interviewed at any specific time. So and they didn't here, let me he, go ahead. Sorry. Let me finish it out. So when he. Like, like when any given cop who has clearly not written anything down since he has no way to create a list of people that were interviewed, how are those cops to remember who they interviewed down the road when they're writing their summary report? They, they don't have the video to go back to. They apparently right. don't have a list of people that they interviewed. So, and just so people understand, cops are not writing their reports the minute after the interview happens, they're not running back to their desk and pounding out, you know, a two, three, four page, five page report. That does not happen. So this happens sometimes weeks. We've had it happen months after the things have occurred. It's just, it's like, these are the things as I was listening to this that I was hoping, Oh, Oh, foods here. How exciting. No, I'm calling this guy to fucking street. Oh, Ali language. All right. Uh, all right. Keep going. Keep reading while you're while it's ringing. Okay. Did it's you not answering? Oh boy, he knows you're angry. He can sense it. He's like, this seems like an angry call. Oh, and I, what I was also going to say was, if this is the the if his role is to oversee like discovery in cases, wouldn't he have been informing other defense attorneys about their deleted and missing interviews? Yeah, you would think so. But you know, oh my lord, cross the street. It's um, this is absurd. All right, what line am I on? You are on uh thirteen. Hello. Hey, uh, comprend uh, tu habla inglés? Español. Ah, uh, solo hablo un poquito español, pero you have to cross. 
uh, Broward Boulevard. Ya tengo, ya tengo, sí, lo que pasa es que la dirección que había mandado no era. This is amazing content right here. Okay. No habla español, pero solo un poquito. Uh, the Hampton Inn, Hampton Inn Hotel. You have to cross. You have to cross Broward Boulevard. No comprende. Pero ¿cuántos minutos más? No, ya, ya está conmigo. Ya lo voy, ya lo acabo. ¿Qué? ¿Cuántos minutos más? I'm going to instruct Darren to keep this in when we convert this to a podcast episode because it's the best. This is some real life shit, right? No, here. Say, no, 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 comprendo. What is he saying? I can't understand. What is he saying? The sushi? <laughs> like, okay. Uh oh, I've lost her. All right, here's what I'm going to do I want to keep plowing ahead. I want to play all roles. I'm going to play Diener and, um, I will play Mullins. And if the, so question, if the officers did what was expected, which is write a narrative for the interview that was recorded, then where would that information be contained? Answer. It would be contained within the reports and the narratives that the officer memorialized their interviews and in either the state police reports, the FBI reports, or perhaps mayhaps in the Orion RMS system or even other agencies or beyond those. Correct. Yes, other agencies. That's true. That's true. There were other agencies that did memorialize reports that we have turned over. Uh, question. But the court gave us a deadline of November 1, 2023 to provide discovery. And did you do everything that you could to provide everything to them that we had? Are you back? I am. Okay, I think yes, he was saying he was waiting for them. It wasn't his fault. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so we're on two on 60. Pick it up with that question. 16? Uh, page 60, line two. Oh, okay. In fact, what has been your directive from Prosecutor McClellan with regard to discovery and whether there should be decisions made about what we share and what we don't share? Oh, oh to share everything that we have with them, even to a fault. <laughs> wow. And you've done that so promptly and diligently, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. Thank you, Which means every tip that came in through the FBI tip line, they've been provided? Absolutely. If we have record of it, they have it? Yes. In the beginning, or when did you start your discovery transfers to the, the defense? I believe uh, December 7th, 2022. And that would have been shortly after their appointment, would it not? Yes. And has it been ongoing since then as reflected in your documents that you prepared that are in exhibit two? Yes. Now there's some discovery that continues to be given to them. Is that correct? Yes. Even though the deadline is passed. Yes. And some of that information is information you could not have had before November of 2023. Would that be fair to say? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear all the question. That's okay. Some of the information you're giving them you could not have given them before November 1st of 2023 because it didn't exist. Is that fair to say? Yes. For example, what would something like that be? Well, recently we recovered some interviews that the state police had located on one of their devices that had been recovered because of an inquiry about an interview that had taken place. And that was furnished to us a few weeks ago. And we turned it over to the defense as soon as we got it on our hands. And those interviews had actually been requested to be downloaded and attached to the state police records, was it not? Yes, and there was a report accompanying those, that evidence that was turned over to the defense. And specifically, the officer who located that for you and did a supplement report. Yes, he did. Can you provide his name? Yes, yeah, so his name is Matthew J. Harper. Thank you. And then aren't you also providing information that comes in from the DOC? That would yes. be the Department of Corrections. Yes. 
And so that would be discovery that was not available before November 1st. Yes. And just to be clear, before the protective order for discovery existed, were there challenges to discovery and the transfer that were then alleviated by the discovery protective order? Oh, monstrous problems. Monstrous. It and what were those problems? The redaction of the data or remove criminal uh, record information, social security numbers, phone numbers, anything that might identify persons, personal information, which we had talked with or interviewed or followed up on in that six or seven year period of time. I'm, I'm baffled right now because it sounded to me based on the last discovery motion that they were getting redacted information or reports that didn't have people's contact information yeah the last thing that uh, mccleland filed was like uh three and four his third and fourth request for uh richard allen's uh mental health records had rick allen's social security number on it <laughs> like oof. yeah right. he's supposed to redact keep, them before he does anything with them yeah keep plowing through okay i'm trying to beat this food <laughs> It's, it's on its way, I think. The oh, redaction man. of data to remove... Oh, that's the answer. And so once that protective order for discovery was granted, you then felt comfortable duplicating discovery and providing it to, de to the defense without redaction. Is that correct? Yes, because uh, we had the assurance that the information would not get out to the general public. Ooh, ooh, dig, dig. Yeah, leakers, leakers. I'd pass the witness. Mr. Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so am I going to, which one do you want me to be right now? Who do you want to be? You want to be Ange? Or do you I wanna, think you I should be, be Andy? I think you should continue to be, ask the people. I mean, right? maybe this is where I do both so you can eat. Mm. Right? Yeah. You know, I can, I'll knock that out of the park, kiddo. Sure. All right. I'll, I'll do both so you can cram sushi in your pie hole. It'll be delicious. So close. It says it's going to make your nice little wasabi soy mix. All right. Question. So let me get this straight. You knew, you knew. In August of 2017, the Brad Holder's video was missing. It had been taped over, right? Well, let me, I'll strike that. You knew in August of 2017 that from February, what was it, the 14th up until February 20th of 2017, that there those no longer existed, those videos, right? Yes, that's correct. But then when you provided the defense with Discovery in, eh, let's say, I think it was the first time was in December, you didn't say, hey, by the way, uh, I need to tell you this. There's some missing video of people that were interviewed in the very early stages of this case. You didn't tell me that, did you? You didn't tell Mr. Rosie that, did you? I didn't tell you and I didn't tell Mr. Rosie that, but I believe I mentioned it to you or your agent uh, or his agent. It's from memory, my memory. I, I didn't write it down. I didn't document it. But He just said not... I didn't tell you, but I think I told you. <laughs> Question, but it's not okay. Well, did you tell Mr. McClellan that there was missing? Oh, oh, yes, he knew. You did. Okay. So, uh, and you were, this is part of the packet that you just introduced into evidence. This is from August 22nd that you just introduced that into evidence. I don't know which number it is. It was Diener okay? Uh, so in August of 20 through the 22nd, we got, you're involved in these letters that go to McClellan or come from him. I want you to look at the very bottom that I've highlighted. And that's one of the exhibits that's been introduced. I don't remember which particular exhibit it was. Ms. Diener, number two, exhibit two, page 11, exhibit two. Answer, page 11, exhibit two, yes. Read the bottom of that. Just to yourself where I highlighted, just for ease. I'm going to ask you a question about that. Answer, yes. May I have that? Sure. Question, so in August of 2023, here's what you said about Brad Holder's video. Uh, that we requested quote you had previously received isp reports that document those interviews and what was said in those interviews though we did not locate any videos of those interviews end quote right answer correct what you didn't say was that quote that's because they were taped over end quote did you you didn't tell us that did you i didn't include that information no question we didn't uh, we did not learn about that that this tape over business happened until February of 2024. Isn't that right? Answer, yes. Then we asked for any reports that detail the lost recordings, and we just got that in evidence in the last couple of weeks, right? Answer, correct. 
I'm going to hand you what's been marked as defendant's exhibit E and ask you to identify that for me. Answer. Thank you. Uh, question. Tell me if you know, uh, know about that. Answer. Yes. Uh, question. That is a document a report that I requested. We requested about quote, Hey, tell us about what, uh, how did you memorialize the lost videotape interviews End quote, right? And that's what you gave us exhibit C answer. Yes. Or question. It doesn't, uh answer it's e it's not dated though is it it's e question e thank you hey sorry uh this document that we got in the last couple of weeks it's it, last couple of weeks it's not dated is it there's no date on it answer there is no date on it did you just produce this answer no question you produced this you wrote this out way back in 2017 answer yes and we've just gotten it in 2024. Answer, yes. After we had to request it, right? Answer, yes. And that wasn't the only thing that we got. I'm going to hand you what's going to be marked as Exhibit F because we wanted all reports about anything missing. Answer, sure. Question, review that document. And then uh, this was provided to us in the last couple of weeks. Tell me when you're ready to talk about it. Some time goes by. Answer, go ahead. A uh, question. This says that, quote, drive two contained the containing the data of recordings made, end quote. And this is in the third paragraph, quote, made by the DVR. Uh, DVR includes interviews in room one, two, and three, and four were missing from April the 28th of 2017 to June 30th of 2017, right? That's what that says. There's missing videos for almost two months, right? Answer. I'm not certain that was the final conclusion. I drafted this report after the incident had occurred, but in that DVD, excuse me, that hard drive, there were errors associated with that DVR and the compromise of the data on it. And, and I explained in the report how that occurred. Question. You do. You do. But the crux of it is from April 28th of June uh, of 2017 to June 30th of 2017. There ain't no videos of any interviews, right? Answer. I'd have to go back and review now uh, to make sure, but I believe there may be interviews, uh, but they may not have sound. Question. And this was the first time this document, Exhibit F, I think it is, was given uh, to this uh, to my partner, co-counsel, and I was, I think, within the last couple of weeks, and we had to ask for it, right? Answer, yes. Question, but we did get a narrative report of Brad Holder, right? Answer, yes. Question, about six paragraphs for Brad Holder. That's what his interview with police or law enforcement kind of came down to, just a number of paragraphs, right? Answer, yes. How long was this interview? Answer, I don't know. And what did he say in this interview? Do you know? Answer, I don't know. What happened to his, when you discovered in August of 2017 that he, that his videotaped interview had been taped over, what did he say when you followed up in 2017 to follow up to make sure that at least that's memorialized? What was lost was memorialized closer in time to 27. What did he say? I'm just not sure I answer, understand your question. Question, did you interview Brad Holder in August of 2017 after you found out that his video was missing? Just to give a good accounting of what he said, just another interview. Answer, I didn't. That would have been a good idea, don't you think? Ms. Diener, objection. It wasn't his place to decide. Court, sustained. Question, so I want to go through these two time frames. We've got February, what, 14th through the 20th of 2017. Not a single log, is there? of who went in and interviewed, right? Answer, not that I'm aware of. The early stages of an investigation, you did an investigation at some point. Answer, I talked to people and investigated leads. Question, would you agree with me that early on in an investigation, that can be some of the most important time frame to receive information? Answer, yes. You didn't go back and re-interview any of those people from those, from those first few days, did you? Not just Brad Holder, but anybody whose video was lost? Answer, I did not. Question, 
Uh, and nor did you try to recreate a log of, quote, hey, I just want to send a memo out to all the police officers who interviewed people. Please tell me who you remembered videotaping because there's six days of lost video, end quote. Did you do anything like that or answer? I didn't. Did law enforcement? No. Question. No. Brad Holder was only in interviewed in 2023 as a follow up because of our depositions that we're focusing on them. Would you agree? Answer. Possibly. There's no other reason you would have gone and deposed, interviewed Brad Holder then, right? Answer, I did not interview Brad Holder. Question, you know he was interviewed? Answer, I've heard, yes. I heard he was interviewed and there's a report about it. I mean, if you could get the recordings back, you would want them back. Would you agree? Absolutely. Question, the second time, the second video time frame that we're talking about, uh, April 28th through June 30th, there was an opportunity to get to unearth those lost videos with some type of Chinese equipment. Answer, software. Question, software, right? Um, -hmm. Affirmative response. Did you get the software? Answer, I turned it over to the state police for them to follow up with. Question, do you know whether they followed up with the Chinese software to unearth these? Answer, I know that we were able to view the videos but some do not have audio. So it may have been successful, but limited success. Okay, okay. So did all the videos get recovered then with this Chinese software? I can't say whether all of them were recovered. We tried to see as many as possible. Question, did you follow up once the Chinese software came into place and something seems, according to you, to have been recovered, did you do a report on that and say, well, quote, well, here's what's been recovered, and here's, you know, uh, I think here's what was that was what was said, and here's what we don't have recovered, end quote. Did you do anything like that? Because I don't see any report about a Chinese, about the Chinese software working. Is there such a report somewhere that said the Chinese software worked? Answer, I don't have it. Okay. You did these other reports. Mm hmm Affirmative response. Question, undated, right? You should have put a date on there. Answer. Thank you. Question. Yeah. Can we agree on that? Answer. I'll do better. Question. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of tips. I mean, you're an investigator for the prosecutor's office. Early on, there were a lot of tips about Brad Holder, right? Answer. There were a few. Question. More than a few. More than a few. Would you agree? Answer. A few. Question. And, some, and so what I understood on direct examination is that when people came in about a tip, they then were told, some of them at least, to go to the Delphi Police Department and get interviewed on video. Is that right? Answer, yes. So some of the people that were, if there were people, if there were people, these few tips that were related to Brad Holder, they would have theoretically gone into the interview room as well. Is that correct? Answer, likely, yes. Question, and those would be lost. Answer, yes. And because there's no log, you don't know who was interviewed or who was even interviewing, right? Answer, correct. You should have a log. Would you agree? Answer, hindsight's twenty twenty. And the state was talking about, well, if they go, they were trained to look for specific information like alibis and then follow up on alibis, right? Answer, yes. So that's kind of a no-brainer, alibis. But would you agree with me that early on in the investigation, you don't know what's relevant or important related to things that could be found in the future? True. So it's nice that you can do an alibi. But what happens if a single sentence, would you agree that a single sentence in an interview taken in context with the evidence in the future might make a big difference in the case, Ms. Diener. Objection, speculation, Mr. Baldwin. I'm asking him as an investigator. The court sustained. Question. And you talked and referenced one of the state's exhibits regarding, I think I have it here, the Unclassified Federal Bureau of Investigation 413.17 follow-up on Brad Holder's alibi, right? Answer, yes. And that's entered into evidence. Here, I'll hand this to I'll hand you this. I don't know what exhibit it is. Answer, thank you. Ms. Diener, I believe it's five. 
Mr. Baldwin, Exhibit 5. Question, it says, quote, the human resources director, Susan Case, said that the security camera at the scales may have picked up his vehicle, end quote. The video may have picked up his vehicle coming and going on that date, right? That's what it says? Answer, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, yes. Question, did you get the video of this from the human resources director? Is that part of the discovery that we all have? Answer, no. Should have had that, right? I didn't have it. Question. All that they really, all that they had really was somebody, the human resources director, said that somebody clocked in with Brad Holder, saying that they were Brad Holder, right? That, that's, that's all they said. Go ahead and read it. Answer. I suppose that they would have to work with his entire shift running his machine as well. Question, did somebody go? Is it your understanding that somebody went and talked to Bradley Holder's co-workers that day to say, hey, was Bradley Holder working beside you? Mrs. Diener, objection. It's irrelevant. Suss it. I'll move on. I'm almost done. Question, did you check to see if Brad Holder switched vehicles with his oldest son that day? Has that been Miss Diener? Again, objection. Hey, Mr. what Baldwin. page you on? I'll hop in. Uh, 72... Line 17. Hmm. Did you find it? It's, yep. uh, it's her objection. So This officer did not complete the follow-up investigation. Sustained. Would you agree with me that if an officer failed to prepare his report before the video was erased, that he was going to use the video? To help supplement, you know, as he wrote, that there may not have been, there may not have even been a memorialized copy. Could that be a possibility? Oh, sorry. I, I was doing Andy. Yeah. I forgot. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry. I'll, I'll quit doing that. Uh, it would be difficult to, if, you, if you're going to use that process because the video was gone. However, I should say, that it was a practice for a lot of officers to request the video to be retrieved from the DVR before the erasal occurred. The erasal. Is that a real word? I don't know if erasal is a word. Can somebody Google erasal for me and let me know if that's a real word? It doesn't seem like a real word to me. The era Have you ever heard of the word erasal? <laughs> All right. Uh, question. Erasal. Erasal. Question two, or line two. We're getting close, kid. Line two. Oh, that's me? Yeah, page 73. You're you're Andy. Well, I thought I was only doing the... the no, the... no, dude. Remember, we're doing Baldwin and the cop. Okay. You're, you're okay. Andy. Right? Oh, so... did you... Oh, do you want... It? I could continue to do it because I was knocking out of the park. Yeah, you just do Diener. Okay, and the judge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was common. Officers would come in and say, quote, Hey, I want to do a report. Can I see the video answer? Yes. Question. Because there's things in a video that can be important to an officer. Like quote, gosh, I just found out this one thing over here. Let me see. Uh, was that important over there is on the video, right? That's maybe why they want to do that. Right. Answer. It's possible. Yeah. You said that Brad Holder was never, he was never a key suspect to this day in this case. Answer, he was at work. Question, he was at work. So therefore, he's never been a key suspect. No matter what other evidence that exists out there, he was at work. Answer, that's what a report says. Question, Patrick Westfall, the same? Answer, his interview would be contained in the report that Agent Pohl did. Judge, I would object to the question anyway. We're here on a motion to dismiss for destruction ex of exculpatory evidence or potentially useful. And that was. No more questions. Specific to Brad Holder. Sustained. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Sorry, Judge. No more questions. Any redirect, Ms. Diener? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Investigator Mullen, you prepared two documents that have been marked by the defense as Exhibit E and F which are the letters regarding the two different issues with the DVR recordings. They do not contain dates, but they do have information at the top referencing Delphi case number and multiple others. 
Do you have those exhibits in front of you? I do. And so at the top, can you explain what's under, quote, investigative report for the court? It is titled, quote, Delphi Police Department Investigative Report. And it shows that the Delphi Police Department case number that we did for an assist in this investigation and the Carroll County Sheriff's Department case number for the double homicide and the state police's case number and the FBI number associated with their case reporting system. So when this discovery was made and you documented this information, did you share it with the other law enforcement? I did. And can you tell from your memory or from these letters who you shared it with? I certainly advised for Sergeant Holman immediately and Detective Liggett and Detective Kevin Hammond of the unfortunate events with the DVRs. Okay. And they were part of Unified Command. Yes. And so they could they could then pass that along to anyone that did an interview that might need to be redone or follow up that might need to be necessary based on the fact that those interviews were no longer available. Is that true? That is true. And you indicated that you gave information to an agent of defense counsel that certain data was missing when discovery was turned over. Could you expand on that? How did you identify that? And to whom would you have been speaking? An agent of Mr. Rosie's office. And again, this is my memory. I didn't document it anywhere. Did you mark the hard drives? Most recent? Yes, I did. The most recent after their... They had been placed back on the case again. I marked them. Each one is having no sound or. No video. No video. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. Or no video. So when they got discovery back after being removed and put back on the case. Now she said removed. Mm. And you were giving them discovery in January and thereafter. You marked the DVR that had no video and no sound? Yes, I did. And when you say an agent of Mr. Rossi's office, Rossi. are we talking about Sarah Luxenberg? Yes. And isn't it true that she picked up the evidence almost every single time? Yes. Did you feel you had a rapport with her where you could share with her and it would get passed along to the defense? Yes. And this rapport was so good, you recalled her first or last name when you called her an agent 15 times. Oh, sorry, that wasn't the question. Okay, no other questions. Mr. Baldwin. Thank you, Judge. Uh, there was lots of video that had blank on it, right? Where you gave, that you gave Sarah. Could you have been talking about that where you open it up and there's nothing on there? Answer, I, I'm not sure how they appeared on the DVD or the hard drive, excuse me. I, I believe the only I believe only the videos that were left on the hard drive would actually appear. So you wouldn't be able to pull up something that was just blank. Question. I'm talking about empty files that were provided to us. There were things that you told Sarah Luxemburg, like, quote, hey, you're going to open up some things and there are empty files in there. End quote. Isn't that right? Answer. Perhaps at first, because we had uh, and each one of those showed in progress as we were putting more information into them. That might be in December of 2022. Question. But we didn't know about the April 28th through June 30th. Those two time frames of missing video until just in the last two weeks. You didn't tell Sarah Luxenberg about that, did you? Answer. I'm sorry, Mr. Baldwin. I didn't hear all of your question. You know what? <sighs> it's late and I'm going to shut up. No more questions. Anything else, Mrs. Diener? No. no, Your Honor. You may step oh. down, sir. The state of Indiana rests. Okay, so uh, they handle some, uh, you know, housekeeping here. Uh, defendants exhibits E and F offered, no objection. Uh, defense exhibits admitted, which of course we didn't get. Thank you. Blah 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 blah. Uh, so Miss Deaner, do do her summary. <laughs> so she's gonna she's gonna wave. She's gonna rest on the pleadings. Line twenty. Oh, we're gonna keep talking. Well, yeah, we're gonna. This is the argument. Oh, I thought you were okay. Sorry, it's Line not really argument. Seventy six. Uh, seventy seven. 
Judge, I believe that our response for the state filed with the court on February 22nd properly summarizes the issues and the case law, so I waive. Okay. Court. All right. I will take the matter under advisement with all of the respective exhibits that have been admitted. And before you all leave, you have respectfully filed. Sorry, I don't <laughs> butchered this. All right. I'll take the matter under advisement with all of the respective exhibits that have been admitted. And before you all leave, you have respectively filed, the state filed a motion for leave of court to subpoena third party records to the Department of Corrections. I've received no objection or motion to quash from the defense. The defense filed a notice of discovery indicating that Mr. Allen's medical records, part one and two, had been provided to the state. So does that take care of your request for the medical records? Mr. McClellan, judge, no, because I think defense and I had a conversation. We're concerned that the records that were provided to the defense may not be a complete set of records from the DOC. I found it necessary that we want a complete, we want the complete set of medical and mental health records to address those issues at trial. And so there is no reason we subpoenaed the DOC to make sure that we get the complete record from the DOC. Okay. And the defendant filed a motion to compel and request for sanctions. That needs to be set for hearing. Judge, I amended that because after I filed it, I found an email from a few days before where Mr. McClellan had responded. And therefore, I'd move to, well, I would ask the court to focus on the motion to amend because in that motion to amend, I explained that. And then I focused on the things that weren't satisfactorily explained or provided. So you want me to just rule on the amended pleading? Correct. Not on the first motion to compel. And the state, you filed your response to the original pleading March 18th. So if you want to supplement, you need to do that quickly. Will do, Judge. And then you also filed your third Frank's notice and request for a Frank's hearing. I'll have to review that and issue an order. Is there anything else? Oh, before we go. Then I will grant the state's motion for leave of court to subpoena third-party records from the Department of Corrections, both of the ones that have been filed. Uh, judge, and this is Rosie. Uh, I'm sorry, may I judge? Yes, Mr. Rosie. Uh, uh, if you'd like to speak on that issue, it's okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I'd like I... to speak on that issue if that's okay. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Rossi, it is. Thank you, Rosie, Your Honor. Uh, right. Actually, I'm, a I'm opposed to the court granting that at this point. We're still within the 15-day notice period. And what's going on here is that is that I made a new request on the Department of Corrections after we were reinstated in this case, and they had just provided that to me. And there's nothing untimely about any of this, but it just happened. And I want to say uh, in the last, uh, it was the last week, Mr. Gallagher from the DOC has been working with me to try to get that information. And so there, and when I received it, we were having difficulty. We were having some difficulty essentially recovering that from their software program, which has been one of the, frankly, one of the challenges that we faced. You get discovery from one entity and it comes, oops, I flipped through the page. Boop. Dropbox. Uh, yeah. I, but my page just like goes in the night. Like it, I don't have it on the flow. Uh, where was I? Dropbox? Line 18. Oh, thank you. Uh, you get discovery from one entity, one entity, and it comes down through Dropbox, and you get it from another entity, and it comes through a Google account, and you get another entity that comes, and they've got their own soft program. And so my staff members, up until I think this past Friday, was working with the DOC rep, Ms. Bedwell, to try to get that information converted into a format that we could read. And I do believe Mr. McClellan's correct that I do think that there was information available to me that the DOC had about Mr. Allen uh, uh, medical and psychiatric uh, when I made the first request that I didn't get. Because now that I have kind of a refreshed request, I'm seeing additional stuff. So this is a short, a long way of saying that I would like a chance to review what I just received before I just agree to disclose it because I don't know what it is. And it's quite voluminous as you might imagine, with medical records. I, I know one of the files I think that I shared with Mr. McClellan was like 900 pages. So, I mean, in fairness, there were some blank pages mixed in there, but my request is, is that the court allow me 15 days or whatever time period is left to file my motion to quash. I really do believe that's probably not going to happen, 
because I'm trying to be transparent with Mr. McClelland. I already showed him the first two dumps I got. So I just like some time to look at that before my. The 15 days is up March 29th. So it needs to be filed on or before that date. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from the state on anything that we've covered yet today? Uh, McClelland. No, Your Honor. I think that covers it. Anything else from the defense? Rosie. No, ma'am. Baldwin. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are completed. Jody, you can go off the record. Thank you very much. All right. Done so. Wow. Three hours. That, that took like the exact <laughs> amount of time that the hearing took. And there's almost 2,000 people here. Shoo. That was a lot. All right. I'm going to pull that shit And out. I ate my sushi so quickly. It was very un disappointing. I, it'll take a minute maybe for my mind to know. That you've eaten? Yeah. All right. Well, you did great work. Uh, all right. So what'd you think? What'd you think? What are your, I mean, I, I mean, don't, we gave I a don't lot know. of commentary during the thing. You know. It's we did do a lot, but it's just, you know, I find it's basically what we kind of spoken about, about like the, the one comment about now they so hooked in to, to Alan that, no matter what, they're not going to find, and I'm just going to say the additional killers or the correct, kill, you know, whichever the case may be. And that's really what's most, you know, disconcerting. Yeah, I mean, because like, that's, that's the thing. Like, that's like, and, and that's like my biggest, my biggest takeaway um, in all sincerity from this was. Not that like I, I knew that they didn't investigate into these guys. The biggest takeaway for me is when you know you hear click on the stand saying, Look, I told McClelland I was concerned, shocked and concerned, I think were the words he used when they when he found out up the arrest of Allen. So much so that he sends a certified letter. McClelland doesn't even have the courtesy to respond to him. He six Jerry Holman on him and this veto dude and you know he goes over there you know with all his papers i just imagine him walking over there he's probably like oh man i'm gonna i'm gonna lay some shit on these dudes today and hopefully you know maybe, maybe they'll maybe they'll assuage my fears you know like i'm gonna they're gonna tell me some shit my biggest takeaway is they don't tell them shit like this is this is like way way into this this is after this is after alan's like jailhouse confessions it's recorded like they they tell this guy nothing if they've if they want him to stand down you're you're coming at him and saying yo bro all right this is super dl you're gonna shut your mouth we're all is on a gag we're all on a proactive yeah it, 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 like at that point it doesn't matter like he, well, he it was. does if he's subject to the protective order and, he's, you know. He's an employee of the state. He's a parole agent. So, you know, either way, well, then that should have been the response. You're not a cop anymore. Fuck right, off. Not tell you'd come down. That's what, that's what he was told. Like you're saying, come down. We're going to share all this shit with you. We're, we're going to make you feel better. Uh, I mean, that's my point. My point is that they, they don't make him feel better. Right. As a matter of fact, they tell him, bring all your shit. Because we want to make sure that you don't have your shit anymore, big mouth. Because right. we're done with you fucking yapping to the defense or whoever Give you're yapping shit away. With. Right. Like, you know, and he brings it all on a thumb drive. You know, he's smart. He keeps his own shit. So, you know, but but the biggest takeaway is they did when they they had the opportunity to say this is the strength of our case against Richard Allen. You know what was in the PCA. We get that you're worried about the strength of that, but here's what else we have. And the fact that that didn't take place with that guy who is a competing force out in the world and knowing that the defense is, is, is hip to his shit is hip. stunning to me. Like that, to me, that speaks volumes about the case against Richard Allen volumes. If they had it, he would have been the guy because that would have got him to stand down. If, if they tell him that in that meeting, they say, this is what we got. Do you think that Click is testifying at this hearing? No, there's no fucking way. Not if like, not then, if he's then, then he's like, oh, all right, 
that they've I got feel way better. I feel way better. Like, I'm good. Like, uh, man, I mean, now it didn't happen. That was my biggest takeaway from this hearing. And my hope is that this shit gets out. And like I said at the beginning, I'm going to say it again here at the end. Anyone who wants to show, I, I watermarked mine. Uh, I know that everybody else has watermarked theirs. I know Sleuthy watermarked hers. I know that uh, uh, Yellow Jacket and uh, Unraveling watermarked theirs as well. And I, I think that Sleuthy's already put it out in the world. So, I mean, share it. It's important. Share it. And, you you know, take take it for what you will. But, you know, I, I hope that at least in, in our reading of it, that we were able to point out some things that maybe aren't just like evident just from the words itself, that you have to kind of look at the meaning behind it, you know, and, and with respect to the loss of the data. Um, and I don't want to go on cause we've been on for three hours and 40 minutes. I know you got to get up for court and I know it's getting late and I know you traveled. So I'm, I'm cognizant and respectful of that. But if anybody saw any kind of actual evidence of when these losses actually occurred, let me know. So like put something in the chat. If you're replay, let me know if you saw any evidence whatsoever when these, I have no proof that these things weren't deleted after they had the depositions. I have zero proof of it. Like I have no proof whatsoever that these things were because like that. So I had somebody say that they worked in security and that a six terabyte DVR. Okay. Cause their whole theory that this thing was running. And I think it, it was it, a, a, a message and during a live yeah it was it it was it, it, and it's like and i don't know if it's true i don't know if it's true or not it, the guy seemed pretty informed and what he said is that one terabyte a one terabyte dvr would run 24 7 for 30 days before it would override before it would override all the the you know all the the prior interviews so we're talking about six terabytes so that's six months that this thing would have had to run. If that's true, that's alarming because that means that they're just flat out lying. And then that means that they should have been able to prove that they intentionally destroyed the videos. And I you know, think the state needed, to, the defense needed to examine the, the DVR. And, you know, here's one thing I'm going to say because Rossi said, but you didn't tell whatever her name was. I forget you know, our agent, this other stuff seems to indicate that maybe he, they did tell his agent before that because his kind of follow-up was, but she didn't tell her about this other thing that happened. Yeah. And and I, I mean, think Andy did a nice, remember if they said something along the lines of, yeah, right. I, and I think Andy did a nice job on cross, you know, and I think that she really cut his legs out from under him. Like I know he had, at least four other witnesses, five other witnesses in there and that were ready, that were ready to go. But like when she started like just chopping his legs off and like, look, I'm sticking you to this, you know, the date that holders interview, that's the only thing we're here for. I'm not going to let you, you know, get me to where I need to be in order to, to have you be able to prove bad intent. I'm not going to let you do it. Like, like he knew, like he, like Andy's no Somebody fool. He just said, I can't find it right now, but that it flashed by, uh, 200 hours per terabyte. Yeah. Well, I don't know. This guy said 24 seven for 30 days per. So, um, Hey, wait, have I been choppy? Is my, like, see our wifi just sucks here, man. It's I mean, like, I, not that I is like, is like my shit clear. Like, do I like, do I look clear to you or do you I look, look fuzzy? clear to me? But you know, everybody's, so, a little, everybody's a little hazy to me. <laughs> yeah. I never like it just sucks. I'm going to have to run direct. So, but like the only thing that I would have liked Andy to ask, because he got into it a little bit, you know, and, and it was the questions of like, you know, things that we're always asking, like, well, so, you know, here, I, I'd like to know, uh, I'd like to know if the FBI agent kept his, his notes that he wrote from the interview of Brad Holder. Like, cause, cause you know, it'd be like, we know that he doesn't have the interview like the to to look at you know what i'm saying it's like he, he can't go back and refer to that so like like hand us his his handwritten notes we want those you, you know, know what I'm travis saying? asked this question and it might be an issue technically what 
I think when you, I don't know that they can control the public though, but I'm not worried about it, Travis. I'm not worried about it. We paid for it. It's public. I'm not, you know, I mean, it might come. It didn't come with something that says like, you can't share this unless somebody pays me. Came to Kara, Kara Winicky, and I trust her implicitly. So I like if, like, why would we not be able to share a public transcript? I mean, because technically, you know, you're supposed to make sure the court board gets paid. She did get paid. We paid her for the transcript. I understand that. But I mean, like, then everybody else that gets it. But she, like I said, I don't know that they can. Oh, it. oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I've got my, uh, well, I've got my watermark on it, you know, right, that so. It just proves that you distributed something that was supposed to get paid for by everyone else who wanted to. I read it. I read it out loud. So, you know, I, I, I'll deal with that. Like if they want to try to come at me, <laughs> going to come it, at you, bring it on, bring, bring it, it on. Like bring that's, it. that's the least of my worries. Uh, you know, it's like, that's just, that's just not something like we, we paid for it. It's my property at this point. So, um, you know, I don't know. Um, so, all right, I'm going to cut you loose because you look exhausted. I'll go through, do the thank yous do the family hugs <laughs> you get some rest i appreciate you i love you uh, i love you too give them hell in court tomorrow and uh i'll see you when you land all right i'll see you later bye everybody uh thanks for sharing the evening of your easter with us he is risen there we go love you i <laughs> love you bye bye all right uh so let's go through uh we got a lot of very generous souls here uh, let me try to go through any questions that I may see first. Comments, $5 holly. Good evening. Both of you look lovely as well. Thank you, Grin, for, for me. Appreciate your generosity and your kindness, your kind comment there. Allie always looks great. She's a, she's a smoke show. Uh, Grin, for me, another two bucks. $2 holly. Thank you for keeping uh, transparency alive, Bob. I do what I can, man. You know, that's all I could do. Uh, Rochelle D, $20 holly. Yay, transcript is vital. Thanks, Bob and Allie. It's, it was a group effort. It was a group effort. There was a crew. So we all kicked in. So, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, we thank all of them. I, I certainly do. I mean, I probably would have paid for it on my own, but like I, I loved being able to share it uh, and, def, you know, defray the cost. So that was great. So thank you for that generosity, that $20 holla. Shiraz with the hundo. My first ever hundo. I mean, I've been on, on Peter's uh, lawyer, you know, and I've seen like, some people drop some bombs on that dude. I'm like, wow. So Shiraz, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, donation towards the transcript fund. Thank you. Thank you so much for that incredible generosity. You're always an, an always giver and we adore you. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for modding because you're amazing in all those ways. Hater guy, $5. Give him hell tomorrow, Allie. Thanks for the facts, Bob. Thank you, hater guy. Thank you for always being here. And thank you for always supporting the show. We appreciate you, man. Uh, ten dollar holla from Amanda. The thanks everyone. Ten dollar holla. Appreciate you. Thanks, Amanda. Always give her. Uh, we got Mandy Ray. Ten dollar holla. Appreciate you. Just wanted to give. Just sweet. Just giving. Uh, thank you so much for that, Mandy. A H. Thank you for getting the transcript for all of us. Ten dollar holla. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you so much. Uh, Q B Designs. $10 holla from the true crime posse of the crime cafe. Please put this towards the transcript fund. We appreciate all of you so much. Thank you, QB designs. We will do exactly that. Thanks for spreading the truth out there. We appreciate you. Uh, crime cafe. Oh, there's your partner in crime. Thank you so much, Bob and gang. You guys rock. Uh, we want to help out the Tron uh, transcript fund as well. Thank you so much for that $20. Holla. That does help. Thank you so much. I appreciate it um angela uh zinzaletta angela 20 dollar holla super chat just to say ali's hair needs to be its own emoji truth chick's got like a beautiful head of hair and my kids were all uh like given that wonderful gift of gorgeous hair uh, all of them all my kids have beautiful hair um unraveling anyway ali get the cuban food truth hater guy ten dollar holla uh okay there's the link uh bet unified co and vinlanders uh they 100 do not want to be linked even if there's zero link to the crime 
need to find an LE or CEO and get them to ID every LE uh, OR guard with any connect picks. I like where your head's at. I feel, I feel what you're saying there. Thank you for that $10 holla, brother. Hate a guy too. Uh, why not press fields to confess? I mean, didn't he? I spit on one of the girls, but I can tell you why I did it. Am I good? <laughs> I don't know. In my world, that's a confession. At least to be in there. He may not have done it, but he certainly seems like he was there. I don't know. Call me crazy. Uh, Jen, $20 holla. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Mod. And, uh, thank you so much for that generosity. Appreciate you. Appreciate you always, Jen. Uh, Sarah, I think we read yours, the $5 holla. Uh, Christy B., we thank you. I think we came through this love. Another $20 holla, getting food in Allie's belly. We appreciate you. Jen, again, with another $20 holla, you're amazing. Allie, eat. Uh, another one of my mods coming through with $2 hollas. I told these mods who I love so much, quit sending money. You guys give too much. Give your time, which is the most valuable thing. Like, And I appreciate you all so much, all my mods. We just, you're amazing humans. You guys should just pat yourselves on the back to break your arm doing it because you guys are amazing i mean you gave up four hours of your night on easter sunday you know i mean you're amazing humans thank you so much um renee ganock sorry if i butchered that renee uh five dollar holla hangry alley will make a perfect judge goal lol gotta get some blood sugar up alley you guys are awesome thank you renee you're awesome and thank you for your generosity uh luna ray Okay, question. Is circumstantial evidence not allowed in hearings such as this? I mean, it is. It is. It's like, but it, like, this isn't a, a determination of guilt or innocence. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're, you're like, in, in this particular circumstance, you're not necessarily qualifying it like that because it's a different argument. You know, this is like a, a legal argument that they're supporting with evidence. Um, and they were trying to get some witnesses on. But yeah, I mean, circumstantial evidence is definitely allowed. You know, but what I'm saying is they're not delineated between direct or circumstantial in hearings like this, not typically. So thank you for that great question, though. Uh, hater guy back again with five dollar holla. They would have uh burned a DVD of each. Liars! You never turn it off. Six terabytes equals over six months. It must have been hater guy that was telling me that. Like, so hater guy, if that was you that was typing that to me initially, um, thank you for that. And I have no reason to doubt you. Uh, and thank you for that $5. Holla. Don Burke, always give a. Uh, this case has our forefathers rolling in their graves. This case is sad. Where is the justice for anybody? I feel for both sides of this case. Our country was built on justice. And, and it is. And I, I just want to keep pointing this out. This is, there's a lot of light being shown on this case. And I'm covering it from the defense side, which I think is unusual. In our true crime world, I think that I've been a pretty loud voice about this case in particular. Um, I feel that I've really been able to get the word out on what's going on in this case. But I want to be clear, like what's going on in this case is, is absolutely systemic in our criminal justice system. You know, that, that in no way um, makes me feel any better or worse about what's going on with Richard Allen and his case. It makes me furious but it makes me furious all the time it's been making me furious for 20 plus years and now i've got the ability to be able to talk about it publicly and have some people that are willing to listen to understand what's going on and this is a perfect case for us to get the message out and all of those hundreds and hundreds of people that donated to the experts funds for richard allen your voices are being heard and it's important and i'm exceptionally thankful that you've chosen to do that if for nothing else and, and remember it's not going to innocence or guilt this isn't about if you donate money that you're saying that you think rick allen's it we can't know until trial we cannot know until trial what we do know is that every single american if they're arrested has the right to a fair trial and the system is not fair like it, it is not unusual for a judge to deny expert fees to the defense. That is not like, she is not just picking on, on Richard Allen. This happens in like cases all over the country, every single day on repeat. That's what the problem is. 
this is not an isolated incident. I keep like, I just want people to understand that. This is just a case where we're all getting to see it because we're all following it. At least the folks that are following it, this is happening all over the country all the time to defendants. It is hard to squeeze money out of the county. The judges are hypersensitive about giving money away, you know, and, and I've heard this thing. I got into a little debate with uh, Brett of the prosecutors in the gallery the other day, and he was talking about, oh, the motion for parity was ridiculous. And, you know, they didn't, you know, they, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Well, that was done. The, the motion for parity was them outing the judge for denying them. They had filed the motions asking for the money ex parte. So, so the things that, you know, uh, McClellan wasn't supposed to read that. That's what the motions are. That's why we haven't seen them. So they did do it properly. And she denied them. The motion for parody was just letting the world know that she denied them. So again, people take exception to it. Eh, I don't. Don Burke. Thank you for that $20. I'll appreciate you. You're always giving and I adore you. Um, Kate civil rights investigator, $5. Holla, appreciate you. And I dig your uh, moniker there. It's pretty awesome. Uh, we got Cyan Davies question. Is it possible to get go booked off? Nope. Bob Riley. What can the defense have on her when this is all done? Nothing. I mean, they can, they can make a complaint to, you know, the judiciary board or committee, whatever they call it in Indiana. But I mean, she's, she's not going anywhere. You know, she's here in this case, y'all like, forget about it. Like there's no getting her off, you know, unless they're willing to, to kick the speedy date. I mean, that, that like to go after goal, to decide to keep digging in and like just be adamant about getting her off the case. The only way it's going to work at this point is if they file another OA trying to get her off the case, which inevitably means that May 13th does not happen. There's no way around it. You know, I mean, and if these fellas are preparing for trial, I think they're they're going in and i like i don't know i've had discussions with with some pretty bright people you know in my opinion like i i'm not so sure uh you know but th this is me not knowing how far along baldwin and, and rosie are in the process of getting ready for trial it's a shit ton of work i've said it a million times and if they're feeling confident the one thing that i know is that if they feel confident enough that they can move forward with the trial that's when they'll do it if, if if it gets to be that they're concerned about the ability to be prepared in the way that they, they feel that they should be, that's in the best interest of their client, they'll file a motion to continue. They're, they're, they don't give a shit what the public thinks. They're not worried about what, you know, what people say. Oh, I'm the defensive. Oh, they continue to stall, stall. You know, like they don't give a shit about that. Like, you know, like as lawyers, we don't, we don't care about what the public's saying. We're doing what's in the best interest of our client, period. End of conversation. And you can ask any defense attorney that that's gospel. Like they are not sitting there sweating, wondering what the public thinks or what the public is worried about. They don't give a shit. None of them do. And they shouldn't because we're irrelevant to the entire situation it has nothing to do with us. Um, so, but you know, I mean, if they get to the point where they're like, you know, I like, I mean, without the funds coming in for the experts, I mean, they may have been in a position where, Maybe they've got to like, you know, they have to kick it up for an OA. Say, look, she's just denying this guy the right to a fair trial by denying experts, like just to make the playing field even. Like if they've got one, we need one of the same, you know, same discipline. You know, we have to be able to offset what they have, you know. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. So that that thing is still open, by the way. And, you know, they we've upped it. I think they upped it to 45 grand is the goal and then i think we're just shy at 30 i mean you guys are unbelievable doing that um so we appreciate you immensely um and it, you're really showing your your love of country you really are you're showing your love of the system of government and the judicial system all which came from that document that i'm always talking about started this country from scratch brand new brand new concept all from scratch so um yeah I, we appreciate you you should be proud of yourself uh close case with cj my boy new creator who i dig 
Uh, I've enjoyed your content, brother. Uh, you know, if I if I'm if I'm jumping into your if I'm jumping into your chat, dude, you know I'm I'm feeling you, man. So appreciate that ten dollar holla. Please put this to the fund as well. Y'all rock. So do you, man. Welcome to the party, brother. Welcome, welcome to the party, and thank you for that ten dollar holla. Uh, Desiree D, thanks to all. We got the transcript, and thanks, Bob and Allie, for the analysis. Much love, much love to you, Desiree D. You're an always giver. Thank you for that ten dollar holla. Oh, Allie, unsolved crimes uncovered. Four ninety nine. You rock, Bob. The fund is undergoing maintenance, but it will be up and running soon. Good to know that. Good to know that. That is good news. I was uh, I was made aware that there was uh, a couple things that had to get done. It sounds like those are getting done, so that makes me very happy to hear that. Good news. All right, so thank you all for that generosity. Let's go through some family hugs. Meg P, one of my mods. Ah, family hug. Gift of ten. Defense Diary mod. Uh, podcast memberships amazing thank you for the generosity mag another five oh family hug 15 lucky lucky people out there are the beneficiaries of meg's incredible generosity thank you meg and for being a mod appreciate you pokemon member two months Woo. love it happy easter all okay i already did that one uh bug dugger member for five months oh gee love you bug dugger that's great thank you for being a part of the family uh let's see what we got uh msls aka kathy k yay welcome to the fam family hug for you new member welcome welcome darren her thank you Ah, family hug welcome to the welcome to the club meg p another five she's in 20 20 memberships by meg p tonight amazing always give her mod all the things you're amazing thank you so much meg for your constant support in every single way spicy cappy Gift of 10 DD podcast memberships. Thank you so much for that generosity, Spicy. And I'm sure that the people that got the benefit of your generosity were thanking you in the chat. Uh, Angie, uh, member for five months. <laughs> Love that. You were an OG. OG. Thank you so much. Don Burke, gift of 10 DD memberships. Another OG. Another always giver. Adore you, Don. Thank you so much for your constant support. B Rabbit, new member. Woo! Like that. Love that. Welcome to the fam. Aw, family hug. All right, we got some more new numbers. Becky Smart became new. Oh, thank you. We're so glad to have you at the fam. Appreciate you. Hope you dig it. Hey, remember, y'all, if you dig the content, the way the YouTubes work, you share. First, you like. That's so easy to do. You just hit the little thumb thing. Boop. Like. But you share it. Let your homies know. Let your people know. Say, yo, these... This big mouth guy and his beautiful wife, they kick some knowledge. Uh, you should probably check them out. Um, that really spreads the show. So, you know, like, share, and subscribe. We need the subs. We love subs. New subs are amazing. We're growing. We're growing fast, y'all. And, you know, I mean, we're doing it. We're, I think we're five months in, like in earnest. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the growth. And that's with us doing basically two lives a week. So we adore you guys. Thank you so much. Um, Lily B, gift of five defense fire, uh, defense diaries podcast memberships. Thank you so much, Lily B. You're an always giver, appreciate you. Uh, Precocent, adore you. Uh, you're amazing. Five months member. Somebody hop up there, uh, as gull while Allie orders food. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mind it though. You know, it's like, uh, Sharon Proctor, or Shannon Proctor, thank you. Became a YouTube number. Welcome. Aw family hug thank you thank you thank you all right i think i think that'll do it oh uh oh, jen you don't even know my ears are killing me girl i don't know what it is I, I think i have big jug handles so these headphones just crush me um thank you so much for that jen appreciate you oh blessings galore indeed happy easter thank you for that incredible last second generosity thank you thank you thank you um i can't thank you guys enough thank you so much for all of you hanging with us for now four hours uh didn't plan on this going for i should have known but this was really like not as much talking and a lot of reading so we hope that it was a good way to spend your evening we felt like it was important to get this out to the world and that that includes kara uh winnikey and that includes sleuthy and that includes yellow jacket and that includes the unraveling we all felt that this is so important to get this out to the people that that's 
why we wasted no time. We ordered the transcript so we could so we could get it, so we could digest it, so we could read it, and so we could get it out to the public because we think that what happened in that hearing needs to be heard by everybody, no matter which side you're on on this thing. Like that is a that is a filing, and like I've told you, that filings is how attorneys talk to judges. And like I said, about halfway through that thing, I have zero doubt that part of the intent of that particular motion was to force Gull to hear what she probably didn't really read in the memo that she denied. Um, I mean, you know that that Baldwin and Rosie are feeling that way, especially Baldwin and you know, in some of the pleadings where they're asking for <laughs> they're asking her to please reread the document. You know, I mean that's that's a that's a you know careful way of telling a judge like, hey, I'm getting the vibe you didn't read it to begin with. So could you reread it? Just check it out. You know, and he got he got a lot of stuff out there. Um, while she didn't appear oppressed, impressed at the hearing, um, you hope that something resonates. You hope that common sense resonates with everybody you know it, it's it's hard to hear a cop who's a legit cop and two other cops really kind of put their necks and careers on the line to say that we're concerned about what's going on here and have, like I, I want you to have no inclination to think that this was anything other than todd click putting his neck out on the line and, and willing to step up on that stand and swear under oath as to how adamant he feels about what he testified to. Proofs in the pudding. You know, there's no misconstruing that. So, all right, with all that, you guys have been amazing. Um, I adore all of you. Remember, share, subscribe, like, all those things. If you happen to really like the content, become a member. Become a member. Um, you know, we try to give some extra perks to our members. You get cool emojis. Eventually, I'll start doing. Uh, I keep promising to do it, and I keep breaking the promise because I'm a terrible person. But we're going to be doing member exclusive lives. Um, I should just be doing those as a matter of like I could talk for an hour easy. I should just do it every week. I could yap about anything. Um, so thank you guys for being here. Thank you for hanging for four hours. It was amazing. Um, again, we hope that you enjoyed it because without you guys, I'd just be an old man talking about old and new cases. Talk at you later. Mm -hmm.